What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Meaning of Podcast. I am Ace. This is RB3. And this is the podcast where we talk about the deeper meaning of your favorite filmmakers' movies. However, in this episode, this is our special Oscar prediction episode. RB3 and I are going to give you our picks. We are considered Oscar ep- experts. Yeah. We are the Oscar aficionados. Oh, yeah. We are the most experienced Oscar predictors in any SK Plus podcast that you're going to be listening to. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. as you as you can tell, we're, we're definitely making that up we're, because we're, we're the youngest out of everyone. <laughs> yeah. And there's guys who've been doing this for yeah. much longer. Bibiani and, Bibiani and, Winnie, and all uh, these guys. Or whatever. Yeah. But... You never know, guys. Sometimes you need a young perspective when it comes to Oscar predictions. We are going to be predicting every category. That's right. Every category. Not just the categories that are obvious like everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. Because I was just telling RB3 before going live that there's a lot of people copying out. There's a lot of people who are like, here are my Oscar predictions for the actors category. I'm like, dude, shut up. Everyone else is going to win for the actors category. Or here are my Oscar predictions for 10 categories. Mm -hmm. Bro. If you're going to make Oscar predictions, you got to go all, all the way out. categories, all the way. All the way. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go all the way, even if we haven't seen every single short yeah, that is on here, yeah, yeah, yeah. even if we're not exactly sure about them or what's getting the buzz or what's not getting the buzz, we're going to give you our expert opinion as far as what's going on in the Hollywood atmosphere, starting with the variety list. So the variety list um, is what we're going to be going off of. So we're going to go bottom up. And variety starts with visual effects. Yeah. We're going to tell you what we want to win and what will win. So the nominees for visual effects are Blade Runner 2049, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Kong Skull Island, Star Wars The Last Jedi, and War for Planet of the Apes. I'll start this out since I am the one starting this out. Mm. And I will start out by saying I want Blade Runner 2049 to win the Oscar. Yeah. I want that to because the visual effects <laughs> in this movie are bonkers and baller however my pick will be war for planet of the apes is yeah. gonna win the oscar for best visual effects. uh yeah yeah i i go the even same. though this is a category that has not always been on the on the you know what i'm saying like because yeah, ex machina won once and yeah yeah there's yeah, like yeah, other yeah. weird yeah. winners that have won uh, in the past matrix beat like for you know, the original phantom menace, hey, phantom menace which is the phantom menace visual effects at the time i guess um I, I'm going slightly different. I think uh, what should win and what will win is War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, I kind of I kind of want Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 to win, man. But You know that, what I want to win, too? What? I mean, I want Blade Runner 2049 to win. But if Last Jedi won, I'd be so happy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just to screw all the haters and yeah. all, the, all the crazy people who yeah. like hate this movie. I'd be like, yo, Last Jedi, Oscar winning picture. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> it would be funny to see that win. Uh, I just it won't think win, the, the Canto Bite stuff takes me out for it. That's true. It takes me out. And then Kong Skull Island... That's, it's that's surprising. It, I, no, I think I think it's very worthy. I, I if you see the behind the scenes features yeah, of of, of capturing Kong, yeah. specifically making Kong, yeah. it, it's just worthy of nomination with within itself of that. I just thought Shape of Water would be in there. Um but yeah, okay, so next next category, right, is uh costume design. Um so the nominees for that are Beauty and the Beast, The Darkest Hour, Phantom Thread, Shape of Water, and um Victoria and Ab Abdo. Um, never heard of that one, if I'm being honest. Victoria Abdul is the Judy Dench uh, movie. Where oh, she's oh, in that's, right, that's right, that's right, yeah. that's right, that's right, that's right. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I did hear yeah. that one. I, I would have put given it uh, again. I'm, I'm a, I would have given most of these categories to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, if I'm honest, oh, including the, uh, costume, design, costume design, especially makeup, which I'm still mad about. Right, right. But we'll right. get to that later. Right. Who um, do you think's gonna win this one? This one. Because I have my pick, and it's it's easy for me. Oh yes, it was super easy for me. Uh, what should win and what will win is Phantom Thread. Hundred percent. Yeah. What should win and what will win is Phantom Thread. I was lucky enough to go to a Q and A with the. Uh, uh, costume designer of this film mm-hmm. and he talked about the costumes it was Vicky Creeps mm-hmm. and the costume designer I will never forget mm-hmm. how they pronounce her name Vicky Creeps they, they, they kept saying like um, this is Vicky Creeps like every time they said her last name it was Creeps <laughs> but um, what should win and what will win is Phantom Thread yeah. and that's going to be your Oscar winner for that category right right um, right let's move up to make- makeup and hair the categories for makeup and hair are I'm sorry the nominees are Darkest Hour, Victorian Abdul, and Wonder. Uh, this one gets me mad because uh, I, there was, in 2014, the 2015 Oscars, it went to uh, Grand Puda Best Hotel, and it should have gone to Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. 100% should have gone to Guardians of the Galaxy. Once again, another Guardians of the Galaxy movie with dozens of creature effects, with dozens of 
Intri- just for intricate, Drax alone. Yeah. For Drax alone, for Nebula, for 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 Gamora, for the side creatures, for for the for the cast, for the extras, and and just the, the intricate detail that goes into every one of these categories. The whole gold people, all of the gold people. The gold people. James Gunn put out a tweet that said it best. Thank you for the nominee of visual effects, but come on, how can you not nominate the gorgeous? detailed work of the makeup team that they did in Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2. That is something that I feel like the Oscars is so out of touch when it comes to superhero films that they don't see the technical aspects of it. And that's something that I'm always going to be passionate about. That being said, this is a clear winner for Darkest Hour. Yeah, Darkest Hour. Because the Gary Hour. Oldman makeup yeah. is what everyone's talking about. Yeah, although I did I did see Wonder, the makeup in that, the the way they did the Jacob Tremblay kid. Sure, is, is but, the, but this Japanese homie, um, what's his name? Uh, Kazujiro Shui, yeah. Suji? Is a master. That guy's a master. Oh, like yeah. he, he basically did it on his own. So it's, it's, a, like, it's a, probably going to be like a legacy award kind of deal. Yeah, know? because he's apparently he came out of retirement to do this, mm, okay. and he's like, I saw a feature right about him, and he's like a freaking genius when it comes to makeup. Okay. And yeah. Darkest Hour is my pick. Yeah, hey, I believe you. Uh, yeah, Darkest Hour is my pick as well. So. Um, let's move on to original, original song. song. Okay. Uh, the category, I mean, the nominees are Mighty River from Mudbound, Mystery of Love from Call Me by Your Name. Remember Me from Coco, Stand Up for Something from Marshall, and This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. Surprisingly enough, this is one that might be a little bit more split than people think. However, I want to hear what you think as far as who should win and who will win. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go a little contrary on this one, Ooh. man. I'm not going to lie. Go. I, I think what will win is Coco. I think uh, okay. Remember Me is, is, is definitely there. What should win, man? I'm not going to lie, man. Mystery of Love is a wonderful song, dog. Mystery of Love, Stephon Stevens, man. If, if, if I, don't see call, I don't see really Call Me By Your Name winning almost anything else. Uh, but like that, that, that song is great. And, and, and it, I just love, uh, Sufjan Stevens as an artist and I would love to see him win an Academy Award. Um, but though I will say that Marshall one though with Common is yeah. dope. Um, This Is Me is dope with, uh, with The Greatest, greatest Showman. Showman. Um, and of course Mudbound is one. These are all, f- these, it's probably the greatest, like five, In the five. past, there's been some pretty shitty yeah. songs. They, you, wasn't nominated. there one year that they nominated two? They nominated uh, two songs. It was like, it was like Rio... And then there was uh, what do you mean two songs? It was like there was only two songs in the best original song. Oh category. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nominated two. It was like Rio, and then it was like uh, the Muppets. Yeah, yeah. And of course Muppets was gonna win that. But um, um, for me, it's should win, will win, Coco. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Remember me is a is a beautiful song. It's even more beautiful in Spanish. Mm. Um, shout out to Recuérdame and Gael García Bernal, who is. Actually, a pretty good singer besides being a pretty good actor. Oh, really? Okay. Um, and Coco, obviously, is is a very personal movie for me in general. All right. Um, go ahead and go to original, original score. Original score, yeah. Okay, so original score, we have Dunkirk, um, Phantom Thread, uh, The Shape of Water, Star Wars, The Last Jedi, and Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Um, okay, so what, what do you think is good? What's, what's the should and what's the will? If, if I'm being completely honest, and this is me being honest, yeah, what I want to win and what I feel like that score just stayed in my head and it stuck with me mm. was Phantom Thread. Phantom Thread. Phantom Thread's score to me is so underrated and it's so good. And that piano theme that goes on throughout pretty much the entire movie, yeah. I don't think it ever stops playing except for like a few scenes, is so beautiful. It's so yeah. good. But what's gonna win is Shape of Water. People love it. It's great. I, I really enjoyed it too. It's very French, um, right. and it's gonna win. Right. Um, yeah. No. I I I I, uh, I agree that Shape of Water will probably win. Um, Phantom Thread is a little too much score for me. That's oh, like I loved 90. it. It's like nice. I was like, give me more piano. Give no, it. It's more. good. No, it's it's definitely great. Oh. It's definitely warranted for for an award of mo- most score, definitely. Um, but for I, I'm not gonna lie, man. Dunkirk is my favorite movie of last year, and the fact that Are you picking Dunkirk. I, well, Are you picking it? I, what I would like to win, but but it's also because I'm also super tired of Hans Zimmer's like same traditional like dun dun like over the top. Oh, I love it. It was it was nice hearing this like little quiet like like the. the it was still kind of big, but it was it's still nice, pretty big. But it was like really creative in the way that it implemented the score in this. So, so you're picking Shape of Water. Um, I'm picking Shape of Water. Will win. What I want to win is Dunkirk. So, so far we've picked all the same ones, right? Yeah, yeah, all, all the Jeez, ones that man. will win. Come on, yeah. we got to make a variation. <laughs> Production design. The nominees are Beauty and the Beast, Blade Runner 2049, yeah. Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, and Shape of Water. You know what's funny? What I want to win is 100,000 million percent. Blade Runner 2049 Uh, should win production design. That production design is amazing in that movie. However, 
my pick is Shape of Water. That is going to win the production design. Yeah, um, this is not arguing this one. I think Shape of Water is going to win. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like Blade Runner 2049, but it's probably that the best out of the it? nominees. Yeah, it's probably the best. Or, you know, I'm not going to lie, though. Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast nice, is dope. Nice set. Yeah, and everything. that was cool. Uh, I don't even know how Dunkirk's really in this one, but... Um, okay, so next category... So, so your pick is... is but my, my pick my pick to win is definitely uh, Shape, uh, of Shape of Water. Yeah. So, um, so we're still the same. Still the same. So sound editing and sound mixing... They're the same, same, the same category, nominees. so let's talk they're, about They're also the, the same. same nominees. Uh, so the nominees for both sound mixing and sound editing are Baby Driver, Blade Runner 2049, Dunkirk, The Shape of Water, and Star Wars The Last Jedi. Um, now, who do you think? Money, money, money is says that these categories are going to match. Money says that the smart man would choose Dunkirk and Dunkirk. Mm. What do you say? For me, I say... Because to me, there's a guy in there that kind of should win, and that's Baby Driver. I think okay. Baby Driver should take one of these, at least one of these. Um but I just... It's hard not pick Dunkirk, Dunkirk. I will say Dunkirk for sound editing... For sound mixing, baby driver. I go for, no, I go for Last Jedi, honestly. That yeah. will win. All right, no, no, not will, not will. I'm sorry. Probably Who both. Who will win? Will 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 win is Dunkirk for both. Will win for Dunkirk is both. What I think should win for best sound editing is Dunkirk and Last Jedi for sound mixing. I think that's that's how you handle that's how you hand those out. Man, this is one that I really want to go against the grain. I want to go mixing for Baby Driver. Okay. Um, and then editing for Dunkirk. Yeah. Um, um, even though, oh, man. but I'm not gonna lie. I mean, but you know what? I'm not gonna sleep on Last Jedi. I mean, I might actually take that one only because T- take it because I might take Baby Driver. Because I think and we could both have different. Well, picks. I don't know. Maybe I mean it could win sound editing too. But the, the the way the sound is constructed in that movie, and this that was a big part of like the whole creation of that. I, you know, what? I'm 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 going I'm going against the grain, man. Even though Dunkirk is my favorite movie of last year, I'm gonna say. Star Wars wins for mixing, e- mixing maybe editing too. I, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go Dunkirk and then Star Wars Which for, one for, for mixing, mixing, uh, mixing for um, Last Jedi and editing for Dunkirk. I'm going editing Dunkirk, mixing Baby Driver. Okay. Which is crazy, but I really do feel like Baby Driver is gonna get something, and that will probably be it. Right. Um, the categories for film editing. I'm sorry. The nominees for film editing are Baby Driver, Dunkirk, I Tonya, Shape of Water. And three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, which should not even be nominated um, <laughs> for editing. Um, the winner is should win, will win, hundred percent Dunkirk. Yeah, hundred percent Dunkirk. Yeah. There's no, there's no question in that one. All right, so we uh, pick both on that one. Yeah, uh, best foreign film. Uh, let's go for uh, the nominees are a Fantastic Woman, The Insult, Loveless, On Body and Soul, and The Square. This is a tough one. Yeah. It's a tough one. You know why it's a tough one? Why? Because the square has so much hype That's, behind it. Yeah. The square has so much hype. Yeah. I'm going to go against the grain. Oh. And I'm going for my Latino brothers and sisters. Oh, and I'm going to Chile. Woman. And I'm going to a fantastic woman, okay. which has actually been getting a lot of buzz. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been, it's probably going to be the first uh, movie Ch- Chilean. transgender Movie oh, oh, nominated. oh, really? Oh, okay, okay. See, and, I didn't, I didn't, I'm, I'm, I'm picking a fantastic woman, even though the square is like the 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 smart man's choice is the square. Yeah. I'm picking a fantastic woman. The, the insult is getting a lot of buzz. Too. The insult and and yeah. also the Russian one is getting some buzz. Yeah, Loveless too. is getting. Yeah, all of them are good. You know, I've heard good things. I haven't seen any of them actually, yeah. but um, I will say though, the square is the one I've heard since like it premiered uh, at Cannes. At Cannes, yeah, yeah. it, it is, won the Cannes. It won the Cannes. Yeah, so that's why. I think that one, and particularly foreign, you know, when it comes to foreign uh, films, they, they obviously go for a lot more of the cast picks. Um, Let's go to best live action short film, which is the category that everyone has been anticipating. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm obviously kidding. Um, <laughs> the nominees are Dead Club Elementary, The 11 O'Clock, My Nephew Emmett, The Silent Child, and Watu Wrote All of Us. Uh, this is a tough one. The reason why it's tough is because I don't know, to be honest, what is getting the attention and what is kind of standing out. However, I do feel like, man, obviously the votes have already been put in, but if there's ever a time to do a movie about school shootings and shootings in general and guns in schools, Mm -hmm. it's now. And that's why I'm picking Dead Club Elementary as the winner for 
uh, best live action short film. Yeah, I'm picking um, Dick Clap Elementary as well. Um, mostly because I know the guy, the director, went uh, goes to UCLA or went to UCLA. Um, so I'm all for film school people winning Oscars. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's go to best uh, documentary short. The nominees are Edith and Eddie. Heaven is a Traffic Jam on the 405, which it is. Um, <laughs> heroin, Knife Skills, and Traffic Stop. Um, I'm going with the past winner, which was White Helmets, which was a Netflix short doc. Uh-huh. I'm going with this year's Netflix short doc, which is Heroin. Heroin, yeah, same thing, same thing. Uh, Netflix puts a lot of money behind campaigning for their docs, and they put a lot of money campaigning for their and shorts. Everyone can, and everyone can say, and they I can saw it, it yeah. because it was on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Um, you Beautiful. can read the best documentary. Uh, best documentary um, nominees are Aberyst, um, Small Enough to Gel, um, Faces Places, um, Icarus, um, Last Men, and uh, Aleppo, and Strong Island. Um, now this one's this one's different for Ooh. me. Uh, this one, you know me, man. Yeah, my heart, bro, my passion, my fire, my my bean. Yeah. I've been preaching this movie since it came out in June. You have, you have. I, I went on the Schmoes No podcast and I and I literally started screaming about it. Mm. Icarus is a life changing documentary. It is beautiful. It is it is powerful. It is amazingly edited. It is 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 ama- It's a it's a relevant subject. It is. It, it should win the, the the best documentary. I've been saying this since it came out, man. Since it came out on Netflix, like the day it came out. I remember I went on the podcast and I was screaming about it because I really do feel like this is a movement that should be happening about the steroids and 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 Russia and the scandal and the cover ups and it, it's just a layered documentary that is so beautiful and so powerful. Everyone should watch Icarus. If you if you're watching this right now, go watch Icarus. It's on Netflix and it's amazing. However, I'm picking the favorite, and that's Faces Places. Faces Places, Faces, places is gonna win. Um, that's my pick. Faces Places. Yeah, you know, uh, man, I'm actually gonna flip it for you, man. I I what I want to win is Faces Places, but we'll. Yeah, it's hard going against. It's hard going against that one because Agus Ver- Verde is like is 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 a legend. Frankly, if you pick Icarus, is, I'd be going. I'd be losing my shit right um, now. Um, I I but which one like, are you picking? I'm going. I'm, I I what I want to. I definitely want Faces Places to win. Um, what I think will win. I'm not gonna lie, man. I think Icarus might might take it only because if Icarus takes it only because Netflix. I'm gonna lose my shit. Yeah, Netflix is but, Netflix but is. But I really do feel like Faces I'm, Places, faces, does, places. W- would deserve it. And I'm I'm probably being I'm probably fucking up. My, Are you picking Icarus? I, uh, yeah, I'm picking Icarus as the as the winner. Yeah. There you go. I'm happy. Um, I'm probably messing up my 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 ballad right now. Um, but I also think the the relevance of like the Russia thing is, you know, in the you know po- you know, Academy likes to put the middle finger up to politics, so that might be part of it. Um, hey but, man, they put the middle finger on themselves. Go watch that documentary. <laughs> yeah, that's a great film. All right, so the next nominees are for best cinematography: uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Uh, we have uh, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Mudbound, and Shape of Water. Um, Ace. Um, what I what should win and what will win is the same for me, and that is Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Deacons has been nominated thirteen times for the best cinematography. Finally, he will get a win in one of the most incredibly visually stunning movies I have ever seen, and that is Blade Runner 2049. However, shout out to Rachel Morrison for being the first woman nominated. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of want that to win just on the historic fact of like having a yeah. woman winning best cinematography. But no, um, Blade Runner 2049 definitely deserves it, and Roger Deakins deserves it, and I'm, I'm happy that he's finally getting the recognition he deserves. Um, let's move on to original screenplay. Mm-hmm. Um, the nominees are The Big Sick, Get Out, Lady Bird, Shape of Water, and Three Billboards Outside Ibn, Missouri. Um, I've been saying this pick for a while now as far as who's going to win original screenplay. It's actually pretty competitive, yeah. but I, I do feel like my pick is the right pick, and that is Get Out. Yeah. Will win and should win Get Out. Yeah. Jordan Peele is going to take home his Oscar in this category. Yeah, it's it's a little tough, man, because like... You want to give it to Lady Bird uh, because you know Greta Gerwig really deserves. I mean, that's a great. You know what's play. funny? I don't think it's even Lady Bird, man. I think the one that has more steam yeah, is Martin the, McDonough. Yeah, the three Martin McDonough. Boys, yeah. People love Martin McDonough, man. Yeah. The Academy loves him. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like he's the one who's the threat to Mr. Jordan Peele, but I still feel like Jordan Peele's gonna win. Yeah, I almost, I almost want to give it to Lady Bird on the fact that like it probably won't win anything else. 
um, the way the way that the, the season's looking. I usually like yeah, to throw one to somebody else, uh, but but I think Get Out is definitely the winner here. Um, so yeah, um, next category of course is the best adapted screenplay. We have Call Me by Your Name, The Disaster Artist, Logan, Molly's Game, and Mudbound. Um, now, what do you where you where you? Yeah, I mean, shout out to Logan for getting nominated. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. I want that to win. Yeah, um, yeah. Just for a comic book movie to win. Yeah, um, if if I would say someone that I want to win, I would want Logan to win. That'd be awesome if Logan yeah. wins. But I'm going with the favorite here, and this is the one category that they're gonna win, and that's Call Me by Your Name. Call Me by Your Name. Call Me by Your Name is gonna win Best Adapted Screenplay, and that's my. Deservingly so. Deservingly so. I haven't seen the movie, so Uh, I can't say deservingly so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, it's very flowery, whatever. Yeah. But it's it's still a dope screenplay. Um, it would have been dope to see Aaron Sorkin win. Is that your choice too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Call Me by Your Name. Yeah, definitely. So we varied maybe on like what two categories? Two, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Probably the sound mixing stuff too. Uh, animated Um, short. Um, the nominees are Dear Basketball, Garden Party. Lou, Negative Space, and Revolting Rhymes. You know what's funny? Negative Space has been getting some buzz. However, the one that everyone is seeing and the one that's going to win is Dear Basketball. Dear Basketball. Kobe! Uh, yeah, Kobe is going to take home the Oscar. Let's go! And all the tears of the Phoenix Suns will the be bl- coming out of my eyes. The Black Mamba <laughs> claims his prize. All right, so next category. Wait, you no, I did basketball. Oh, yeah, okay. man, it's a fucking no. no <laughs> um, yeah, you can watch it on Go ninety two. By the way, so you, you want to watch an Academy Award winning doc, uh, uh, short animated short? It's, it's, it's up there. Um, animated feature. We have the Boss Baby, <laughs> uh, the Breadwinner, Coco, um, Fer, Fernland, and um, Loving Vincent. Um, now, what I will say, uh, what I, de- I definitely think will win is Coco. But I do recommend people check out The Breadwinner. It's on Netflix. And people need to check out Loving Vincent. Beautiful film. Um, first, first fully painted um, motion picture of all time. So yeah. check out those. Um, um, what will win and what should win is Coco. That's a movie yeah. that it, it deserves all the attention it's getting. It's a, it's a great example of uh, diversity and representation and, and putting family in film and how that can turn into Oscar gold, yeah. literally Oscar gold, uh, yeah. Coco's going to win. Um, moving on to Best Director, and the nominees are Christopher Nolan for Dunkirk, Jordan Peele for Get Out, Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird, shout out to Greta, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson for Phantom Thread, and Guillermo del Toro for Shape of Water. This is a super easy one. Guillermo del Toro is going to win yeah, for Shape of Water. And who should win? I think it's Christopher Nolan who should win. Yes, I. That's my exact. Um, that's my exact. Even though yeah. I mean, Chip Water's fine. Del Toro did a good job. I love Guillermo del Toro. I mean, he's my Mexican brother. Mm. But Christopher Nolan's a master, yeah. and he should win this Oscar. But it's gonna go to Del Toro. Yeah, it's good to see him finally get nominated, though. I mean, yeah, yeah this is the first nomination. He, yeah, definitely same same exact thing. Uh, Guillermo will win, and Nolan will. Uh, Nolan, Nolan deserves to win. Um, next category is best supporting actress. The first category they always uh, go for in the Oscars. Um, nominees are Mary J. Blige for Lovebound, Mudbound, Lovebound, what the heck? Um, uh, uh, Alicia, uh, Alicia Jennings for Itania. Allison Jenny. Allison, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with me? Um, Leslie uh, Manville for uh, for Phantom Thread, um, Lori Metcalf for Lady Bird, and Octavia Spencer for Shape of Water. Who should win in this in my humble opinion, and I told you that's the most impactful thing out of this movie, is Laurie Metcalf for Lady Bird. She's mm. amazing in that movie. She nearly made me cry. She has a very emotional arc. Um, she's so natural and so powerful in that movie. But what will win is who's been winning all of them, and that's Allison Jenny for I Tonya. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. Allison Jenny will win. Actually, you know, the should win Laurie Metcalf definitely, but. Uh, uh, Leslie Manville for uh, for for Phantom Thread. That's really? an amazing performance. She's good, but but I felt like Vicky Creeps was uh, Vicky, way Vicky Creeps way better. Yeah, she was better. Yeah, I, I just agree. felt like Manville wasn't in it as much. I mean, she just kind of gave stank faces the whole time. She's yeah. like, yeah, I guess, but like I, I thought. I mean, she was good, but it was just like she's only in it for fifteen minutes. <laughs> I don't know, man, but I don't know. She she, I like she movie, has a presence. She has a presence. I think Vicky Creeps was the standout. In uh, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel you on that. Um, definitely. Um, for Best Supporting Actor, though, we have William Defoe for The Florida Project, Woody Harrelson for Three Billboards, um, Richard Jenkins for uh, The Shape of Water, um, Christopher Plummer for All the Money in the World, oh. and uh, Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Um, once again, I'm picking the guy who should win. Um, and that's Richard Jenkins for Shape of Water. He's in the, he's the, he's to me is the one that stands out the most in that movie. Mm. Such a moving, powerful performance 
but the winner is going to be Sam Rockwell for three billboards outside right, of Missouri. Right, right, right. Um, I didn't see three billboards, so I don't know if Woody Harrison or Sam Rockwell are necessarily, I don't know if they deserve it. They probably do. Um, because Martin McDowell always brings great performances out. I will say, William Defoe. I finally got around watching the Florida Project, mm. man. I think William Defoe deserves that. William Defoe really deserves that. He he brought okay. he brought something. He brought that movie to another level. Yeah, for he's me. the best part of the movie. for Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And uh, Sam Rockwell uh, will win though. Sam yeah. Rockwell will win. Uh, next category is lead actress. The nominees are Sally Hawkins for Shape of Water, Frances McDormand for Three Billboards, Mar- uh, Margot Robbie for I Tonya, Saoirse Ronan for Lady Bird, and Meryl Streep for The Post, which should not be. Jesus Christ, Meryl Streep. Get out of there. Um, <laughs> hey, man. Wait, did you see The Post? I didn't. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. With Meryl Streep again? Yeah, really? I know, no, I, know, I know. I know. I know again. Put but someone else in there. I know, I know again. I know again. But she was great in that. She uh, was great in that. I'm going to pick what, what should win. I really do feel like it should be Sally Hawkins for Shape of Water, but it's going to be Francis McDormand for Three Billboards. Yeah, um, for me, I think Francis McDormand's a lock for winner. But I will say, man, Margot Robbie, I, Tanya, she really... I want to li- see that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I saw it. Yeah, she she lives... She lives that's kind of like the part of a, a generation for me, so she's, she's great in that. Um, we're going to move on to the next category. Yeah, lead, lead actor. Um, the the nominees are Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name, Daniel Day Lewis, Phantom Thread, Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out. <laughs> um, shout out to Rhino Writing. Hey, Rhino, let's writing. go. Uh, Gary Ullman for Darkest Hour, and Denzel Washington for Roman J. Israel. Um, or you could say James Franco for The Disaster. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Will win, should win, 100%. Gary Oldman, shout out to one of my favorite actors of all time, finally getting his Oscar. Gary Oldman has inspired me for years, and he's finally going to get his win as an Oscar. Yeah, man, it is tough, man. I mean, I definitely, Gary Oldman's a lot. It's not Gary, tough. Gary, <laughs> no, Gary Oldman's a lot. Gary Oldman's going to win. Gary Oldman's a lot. She, he, and, and yeah, he's definitely going to win. I will say, we should win, though. Daniel Day Lewis, Phantom Thread, man. I mean, that's he's that's great, pretty, but he, he's but he's yeah. No, I don't know, uh, man. No, don't get me wrong. I, he's amazing. He's amazing. I think no. I think he to me this is like prime character. I think I he's still stuck. feel like Gary Oldman's better though. I, I don't. Oh, I haven't seen Darkest Hour. So oh, you know, haven't? No, oh, haven't, dude. No, no, I haven't. So I watch haven't it. it. It'll it'll um, change your it'll change your mind. Okay, okay. Um, but I just think that Daniel Day Lewis is amazing. And here um, we go, guys, for the big category, the best picture, the one that actually has some variation in this because besides. All my picks have been safe picks besides the sound mixing, which I said Baby Driver. I mean, if I said Dunkirk, you would probably have a perfect Oscar ballot, in my opinion, because I think my Oscar ballot's pretty good. However, I'm going to break everyone's Oscar ballots by picking my Best Picture nominee. Mm. And everyone is saying that this will be either three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, and Shape of Water. Money, money, money. If you're putting money on this Oscar ballot, pick one of those two. If you're not, go with me and pick the dark horse. And I am picking, I've picked this since months from now. RB3 is witness to this. Mm-hmm. I'm saying Get Out's going to win it. Will win, should win. Get Out will make history and will win Best Picture. Ace walked out at the eater and said Get Out will win Best Picture. I did. <laughs> I, I will retweet my tweet from last year. I'm not even kidding. I'm going to retweet that on Oscar night on exactly March 4th of last year when I saw Get Out. Mm. I tweeted out that that. Get Out is the best movie of the year. Yeah. And yeah. there it is. Best movie of the year. It's going to yeah. win Best Picture Oscar. Yeah. There you go. Ace's pick. Ace's pick. All right, man. I mean, I, I can't fight you on that, dog. Uh, yeah, you definitely don't. Okay. You're like, no, no, no. I, I'm I going mean, where the money's at. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, three's like, yo, I want to make money on this well, shit. Well, see, 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 here's the thing, man. I It's tough because you don't want to go with, you, you, you have to also follow the backlash, right? You have to also follow the timeline of the backlash. The backlash for three billboards. But is that's why hitting. Shape of Water starts to so, take. Yes, yeah, Shape of Water. But I'm even hearing people who are like, Shape of Water is not even that great. It's and, not. You know, and, it's, I've been saying yeah, that. It's I, not. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's dope. It's, it's just, good, but the, it's not. The musical takes me out of it um yeah but okay so this is but that's tough too because you don't know like people probably already submit their votes um but then get out creeps up a little bit too but then dunkirk dunkirk's kind of remain level to be honest um lady bird doesn't have a chance phantom thread is too weird the post people just see it as whatever the only other one um, i can maybe see is call me by your name call me by your name but i don't think that has enough buzz I so don't think what are you picking buzz. rb3 come um, on I, I, i'm going for shape of water on this one man i'm going with the safe pick um, safe pick, I'm going with the safe pick, and I I just think the three billboards is too like controversial at this exact at, at this moment and, and as of moments when it was obviously at its peak. Um, 
I, so I think Shape of Water got this one, man. I think Shape of Water there got it. There you go, guys. All right. Let us know in the comments down below who made the right picks. Pretty much, like I said before, all my pranks are pretty safe for the most part, besides maybe a... a no, all of them are pretty safe. Um, yeah, let us know what you guys think of our picks. Am I crazy for picking Get Out? I probably am crazy, and I acknowledge that. Like I said before, <laughs> if you want to make money, pick Shape of Water with three billboards. Um, if you want to be a game changer like me and wear Adidas, not playing. Um, <laughs> they have those game make game changer. Game changer ass. Yeah. yeah. But uh, let us know what you guys think. Those were my picks for 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 the Oscars, and those were RB three picks for the Oscars. Yeah. Join us for our Oscar special. Um, our this coming week that's coming up and join us on Twitter on Sunday because I'm going to be live tweeting the Oscars mm. and I'm sure RB3 will be as well yeah, I'm at Squad Leader Race at RB3 Schmoes and let us know in the comments down below who's going to win guys who's going to win this Oscar ballot mm. from Ace and RB3 we are peacing out What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Meaning Enough Podcast. I am Ace. This is RB3. And this is the podcast where we talk about your favorite filmmakers and the deeper meaning within their films. And today is our Oscar Roundup special. We have finished the Academy Award, guys. It has been officially two days since Sunday. So it's a Tuesday, so it's kind of a little bit late to be talking about the Academy Awards. However, this is our day the podcast goes up for us, so we're yeah. going to talk about what has transpired as far as the 90th Oscars that just went down. We're going to talk about the winners, we're going to talk about surprises, snubs, upsets. Um, we want to talk about the show as a whole, the hosting, the bits... The nitty gritty guys, we're going to get into all of it in this episode, so make sure and tune in all the way through. We're going to try and run it down as quick as we can. We don't want to drag it out, but we will make it as entertaining as possible because that's what we do on yeah. the Meeting Enough podcast. We're not making a four-hour show here. We ain't so. making no four-hour show. We, we we want them ratings, man. Yeah. We want them numbers, even though we yeah. don't get them. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're going to talk about our comments from last week's episode, which last... Well, technically, there we had two episodes last week, which was Spike Lee and our Oscar predictions. And I failed miserably on my Oscar predictions because I went with my heart, and it turns out my heart is wrong most of the time. Oh, you can't you can't bet against the uh, the favorites. I, you know? I I tried, man. If I if I honestly picked the actual favorites, I would have clearly won because I I I've said like what I what should be winning and what I want to win, and I kind of went with I want to win instead of what should be winning. Anyways, I messed up. I lost. <laughs> oh, well. Let's read some comments from last week's episode. Once again, guys, make sure you leave us comments every week. It's the best way to connect with us. It's the best way to keep in the loop. It's the best way to tell us that you're interested in what is going on on the Meeting of Podcast and that you support us and that you support what we do. Please do so because we need that support. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, here's a comment from Parsa Efrahari who says, Ace, you must see Call Me By Your Name and Three Billboards. Uh, yes, I want to see Call Me By Your Name. I still haven't seen that movie. It still is semi not appealing to me. Sorry. Oh, it just looks like a super boring movie. Oh, man. Um, however, I did see three billboards outside oh, I Ebbing, saw three Missouri. billboards too. I saw you three, saw billboards, three billboards, billboards Did yeah. you see my tweet about it? No, I didn't see your tweet Come about on, it. man. My no, tweet's man. legendary, bro. I, oh, shit, I got I them likes, it. man. I got my them bad. 18 likes. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> I... I I confessed that Three Billboards is a good movie. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic. Good movie. I was ready to come in here, man, to debate you. Like, and, oh no, 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 it's a it's a good movie. Yeah. However, Whoa. I put that asterisk, asterisk, and I say that it, I don't think it deserves Best Picture, and oh, I'm glad man. it didn't win Best Picture. What's up, bro? What's up, Three Billboard fans? They're gonna come at me again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tell yeah. me they're gonna kill me. Um, you don't think it deserves to be nominated? You don't think it? Deserves one hundred percent deserves nomination. One hundred percent deserves original screenplay nomination. It deserves a Martin McDonough recognition. It deserves all the acting recognition that it deserved. It is one hundred and ten percent a good movie, a really good movie. I just still don't feel like it's a it's a it's a twenty seventeen defined movie. I don't think it defines the year, and I feel like an Oscar Best Picture winner should define the year and should be an all-encompassing movie, but, if I that mean, makes any sense. Yeah, but then, like, do you think The Shape of Water encompasses anything? That That's a good point. Uh, here, here's my thing. I think Shape of Water is a more artistically made film. I feel like Three Billboards overall is a better film than Shape of Water. Yeah, man. I, I don't know, man. I kind of think... I think If it, I had if, to pick between... It's tough, but if I had to pick between the two... 
I might lean towards Shape of Water, but I feel like, I don't know, Three Billboards is the better movie than Shape of Water. That's just fact, in my opinion. It's a, it's better than Shape of Water. But then you don't think the better movie deserves... But I don't think Best movie. Picture is necessarily the better movie. I know that I I'm, I'm feel like, I sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm saying Best Picture isn't necessarily the better movie or the best movie. Otherwise, it'd probably go to Dunkirk, right? I mean, it would go to a movie like Dunkirk, right? Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you say? Because that's your favorite that's movie. That's my favorite movie. That they, see, but yeah. at the same time, would you give it the Oscar for Best Picture? Well, I don't know. I would, but then I, I would I would also... I also wouldn't recognize it. I guess it's not for everybody. You know what I mean? Sure. I guess Three Billboards is not like... But you feel perfectly like three, for for every I would, but neither I would say, shape of water. To, to me, if 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 you got the movie that best defined twenty seventeen, it'll be Get Out. One hundred percent. That's why. The, that's why I rooted for Get Out, and that's why I feel like Get Out one hundred percent over Three Billboards to be. I mean, obviously Three Billboards wasn't didn't even win Best Picture, but I'm just saying that if I had to choose between the two, I would pick Get Out ten times out of ten because I feel like that defines a year more than Three Billboards. If that makes sense. However, yeah. Three Billboards, great movie. Francis McDormand is amazing in that movie. So is Sam Rockwell. So is Woody Harrelson. So is every single cast member in that movie. It really is a super well-written, good movie. After, wa- after watching it, man, I, I almost kind of do think Martin McDonald got snuffed for uh, for Best Director in that sense. Like, I, I, I can give you that. I, I, I like the nominees that they chose, though. I really I do. like the nominees. PTA. PTA. No, I'm, Jordan I'm, Peele. Listen. Paul Thomas Anderson is Christopher one of my Nolan. Favorite. Yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson is one of my favorite filmmakers. Well. There you I'm go. Not gonna, I'm not going to discourage, but I'm just saying, like from a director, I mean that long take when Sam Rockwell like throws the dude out the window, like that's fucking that's well, directing. That's the other right thing there, too, man. man. Like, I-, I wanted to kill Sam Rockwell's character <laughs> five minutes into the movie. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. can I kill this guy? Yeah. I- I'm that dark. Well, you I'm, know, I'm super dark. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny, man? Is it's, it's a tricky situation when you talk about. A movie that you like, but you don't agree with politically, or sure. you don't. I like, you know. It's for me. It's like I have a hard time, you know, recognizing a movie about you know a racist cop. Is it a racist movie, or is it a movie about a racist? You know, that's what Tom Boyd, it's a, our, it's a our movie, film professor, says. It, it's a movie about a racist. I wouldn't say it's a racist movie necessarily. Yeah. How, it is a little muddy towards the end of the movie when they try and 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 you know kind of give a redemption arc towards Sam Rockwell's character. I don't feel like. Ne- to be honest, man, if, if even if Sam Rockwell was on a vigilante quest to take revenge for Francis McDormand's daughter, I would still shoot the guy if I <laughs> saw her. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I get that you're trying to do better racist cop, but you're still a racist cop. And you still, they really made it a point to say that this guy was like the scummiest of the scummiest. Like they, he, yeah. they didn't just say, you know, racist. They, they said like, like freaking black beater like they, yeah, they called yeah, him torture torture they yeah. said torture they yeah. said that word like a few times yeah. like if you need any other strong word i mean he threw a freaking guy out a window <laughs> and, but that and was like a cool scene though man i don't feel like it was cool man like the whole i mean i guess it was a cool scene. Uh, cinematically cinematically it was cool yeah. but the whole time i was thinking bro if i were there i would have picked up a, a stick and beat the <laughs> shit out of him i, I would have just... found a weapon and shot the cop I like and that. I would have claimed self-defense Spoil- spoilers by the way for three billboards I guess kind of it. I, it's, it's not, not really it's not really it's like um, a, what is it like, like 30 minutes through. in the movie it was like halfway through yeah, yeah it's not a spoiler uh, man but that's just that was a great way like it's a cool scene second. but at the same time I, I, I just don't see a guy who's like at, at the end of the movie when he's like I'm sorry man I'm like dude I don't care if you're sorry bro oh, <laughs> I would still shoot your ass bro yeah, but when homie came <laughs> back and gave him a couple orange juice didn't I just bring tears to your eyes bro like yeah him, yeah. yeah he's a great actor I love that he's from uh, Get Out too yeah yeah, yeah. I, forget I can't his remember name. his name yeah. and he plays a, a banshee in um, X Men First Class yeah uh, two Best Picture nominees that guy's in too Keep yeah that. it's another yeah. one. Uh, Obviously, Michael Michael Stuberg's in three, uh, but whoever that homie is, we gotta look up his name. Yeah, man, he's he's a great actor. He's he's banshee. He's like super nutty too. If you hear Jordan Peele, um, I finally watched the Get Out uh, director's commentary. Mm. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I don't know if you've seen it, uh, RB three, but Jordan Peele really breaks everything down. But he really made it a point to talk about that actor specifically, who plays the brother of Allison Williams. Um, Caleb Landry Jones. Yeah, Caleb Landry Jones. Um, yeah, great actor. He's he's. Uh, I mainly know him from uh, X Men First Class. X Men First Class. Oh, he's in Twin Peaks too. Wow. Oh, there you Twin go. Peaks, yeah. Who's a which is an awesome movie. But but Jordan Peele said that he's a method actor and that he gets in character. 
So like the whole time while filming Get Out, he was like in character and he was like super like like crazy like aggressive, and like, aggressive and like yeah. wanted to wrestle like Daniel Kaluuya and kept messing with him and stuff. Yeah. And like apparently he's like a really method actor who's yeah. like like he he apparently did like uh, like artist stuff like he did like drawings of what the character would draw and he draw like what is what it would feel like for him to like be inside a black body and stuff like he yeah, really right. took it right, method took his, <laughs> he went with, uh, lakeith, lakeith stanford lakeith man. stanford yeah, was yeah, another yeah. method actor yeah, yeah who's man. who's also in that movie and who's also super method and who's super like in a character we saw him at comic-con yeah, and we yeah. got to know him a little bit we're like yo this guy this guy's really darius yeah. <laughs> from atlanta because darius is crazy in yeah. atlanta and you're like he's funny he's crazy and i'm like oh no he's really crazy <laughs> did you watch atlanta we, we talked about yeah this we, off, i yeah. saw the first episode of yeah. season Season two, yeah, yeah. Man. if you're not watching Atlanta, go and watch gentlemen. Atlanta, man. It's, it's violent, it's funny, it's, it's like, weird, yeah. it's it's out there, it's original. Yeah. It, it's one of the most, it's one of the most original shows in recent years. It yeah, really yeah, is. yeah. It really is. Well, every every cast member in there is uh is like really taking it like to the next level when it comes to like. At like particularly Donald Glover, he's like writing the episodes. Um, he directed and his brother too. Yeah, his brother, I forget his brother's Steven, name. Stephen Stephen Glover. Stephen Glover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they have a really good. I mean, just the whole and, tone, and the, the atmosphere. And, the, and his Japanese director, homie. Um, he, yeah, Hero. That Hero, guy. Yeah, M- Mickey, I think. Is yeah, his who directed yeah. like almost every episode last season. Yeah, yeah. Except for two, I think Donald Glover directed two. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, I mean, dog, just a fun, fantastic show. And by the way, like I love the fact that this is a show that the streets could fill and that you know the general, the film school people could could get get behind, like. It's yeah, just, it gets it, it straggles that line, man. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, that no, it's a really authentic. Uh, uh, yeah, for for a, for a show set in an other verse, which it basically is, it's like a weird <laughs> universe of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, but it is Atlanta though. It's it, Atlanta, but yeah. it's also like Atlanta in a different planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I mean that obviously is a is a. It's a great movie. Three Billboards is a great movie. Get Out's a great movie. Oh, oh, one more thing. That that uh, Cal, was it? Uh, Caleb, Caleb Landry Jones. Caleb Landry Jones. He's also in the Florida Project. He's Jack. Oh my the God, Project. he's Willem Dafoe's son. Yeah. In the Florida Project. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. That guy freaking took off the year, man. Yeah. He's he deserves more stuff. He should have he should have been uh, in three Best Picture nominees too. He should have. Yeah. I mean, well, technically, I mean, it's not a Best Picture nominee, but it is a still a nominee. Yeah. Should have been for Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Yeah, because he played his son. Yeah. And he's great in that. Even if 10 minutes in the movie, he's still great. Yeah. Because he's moving the freaking vending machine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Yeah, that guy's great. He's super great. He deserves all the all the attention. And he's got one of the best scenes in Get Out. So <laughs> talking about MMA and judo and all that, oh, which right. I appreciate. Right. Um, David Rosario says, how the heck did Shape of Water not get a nomination for Best Makeup? By the way, a great show, you guys. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I, I, I was watching the Oscars with my buddies on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And... We saw the nominees, and, and as soon as they cut to Victoria and Abdul, I really scratched my head so hard. <laughs> I was like, where is the makeup in there? Right. I don't see it. Like, it, making Judy Dench look like Judy Dench. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm mm-hmm. trying to get it. I, I, I get the winner, which is 100% deserved um, for Gary Oldman. I still, like I said in, in my previous episode, I still would have preferred Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 right. get a, not only a nomination but a win. Mm-hmm. But if anyone else is going to win between the favorites, I would have given it to Darkest Hour. So the rightful winner won out of those nominees. Mm-hmm. But Victorian Abdul over Shape of Water? Like a nomination? Really? Victorian Abdul? Like... I haven't seen I haven't seen Victoria and Abdul. So I don't See know. the trailer. <laughs> There's what makeup is in that, bro. Uh, like when I think of makeup, I think of Darkest Hour. I think of Wonder. I think of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I think of creature effects. I think of making something original and unique, not making people look, look like old. people. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't know how much of the fish creature was. Uh, f- like physical makeup versus how much was just CGI. Like I don't know what's the it's, distinction. It, it, it's 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 it, the vast majority is it, it, it's partial. It's both, but but the vast majority is makeup. Um, the eyes, the gills on the on the chest was CGI, but the vast majority is makeup. And obviously there is lights that glow up and on his skin and stuff. Right, and that's that's right. CGI. Um, ca- uh, 
Kai Jaradai says, hey, Ace, have you seen Silent Voice yet? If so, what are your thoughts? I haven't seen a Silent Voice. I said I was going to watch it like three episodes ago, mm-hmm. and I still haven't seen it. Um, it's another anime film, in case you don't know, that got a lot of attention this past year. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of I've been fighting a lot of people, not fighting, but like debating a lot of people about right. um, your name as far as it being a 2017 film. I still feel like it's a 2017 film. I, I, I don't understand the concept of releasing a movie that's internationally that I can't see and then them saying, well, you should have seen it in 2016 when it came out. I'm like, bro, it didn't come out where I was in 2016. Therefore, right. it's not 2016 for me. It's right. 2017 for me when I saw it mm-hmm. when it came out here. Right. If you If you search Google U.S. release date for your name, it's a 2017 film. But technically, A Silent Voice was a 2017 film as well. I haven't seen it. I will see it. It's apparently really touching and really nice. So, cool, cool. Um, do you want to take some comments from the Spike Lee episode too? Or? Sure, yeah. Like, yeah, if, yeah. You have, if you have one, um, let's uh, jump into that before yeah. we get into it. We have one here from um, Alec uh, Musil- um I'm sorry, Musila. I'm really butchering your name, homie. Sorry about that. What an episode, guys. Absolutely love the discussion, especially um, as someone who hails from Brooklyn. Do the Right Thing is one of my top 10 favorite films but i was wondering what are you guys' thoughts on spikes on the spike film bamboozled which is recently assigned to my class thanks for the dope work yeah bamboozled i haven't yeah. seen it oh, okay okay <laughs> yeah it's it's a very weird it's a commentary on like hollywood like it's about a tv writer who uh who puts on blackface and you know trying, that's right you told yeah. me you didn't like that one right? yeah i don't i think it's kind of cheesy i think it's a little over the top uh, but it does go at some very relevant stuff and you know it, it kind of came out during the time, I mean, it was just like right before like Dave Chappelle shows on TV, right That's before. Right. So like a lot of the sketch shows kind of incorporated a lot of, um, this was like In Living Color was like still on television too. So it was like, uh, it was like, t- it was like at the time like of TV sketch shows, um, there wasn't a lot of like representation of people of color, particularly with black people. Um, so then there was like a lot of like broad stereotypes, generalization sure. before, before, but like kind of during and before the era of like Jamie Foxx and like J- Dave Chappelle, who kind of honed their own stereotypes and made it like satirized sure. upon itself. Um, other than that, though, man, I don't really have much. I saw that movie a long time ago, so I'm not really 100% sure um, if I could help you with your assignment. Because I know you're listening to this podcast to uh, get some help with your assignment. But no, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of Spike Lee's. It's probably one of his most, like, undervalued films, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, Spike Lee has a, has a, another, has a whole long list of, 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 of better films. Of, be- of, to me, better films, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh want to take one more before we move on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like this one from Jeff C. Nexon, who writes, Next Generation of Profiles with Malone and Mance. Hey, uh, yeah. sh- hey, shout out to you, uh, Mr. Jeff. Yeah. Uh, appreciate that. That's high compliments. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we appreciate Alicia that. Malone and Scott Mance are inspirations. Yeah, uh, we're we based our show off. Of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> their hashtag goals. Their hashtag uh, what inspire. Uh, they're they're honestly like some of, some of my inspirations personally. Yeah, Both sh- Alicia and Scott, obviously. Yeah. Salute um, to uh, Alicia for getting that uh, uh, full time. Oh gig yeah, at, uh, you know, congratulations to movies. Alicia. Alicia, man, she she's a sweetheart. You you unfortunately didn't get a chance to work with her on the Schmoes No Show. Yeah. As much as as we did um, when I was on, because when I was on, you know, Alicia was like the main host, mm-hmm. and I got to do some shows where she actually led the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and when and when Copster and and Christian and Mark weren't there, which was a cool opportunity for me to see how she kind of throws down. Right. She throws down yeah. like she's smart and she runs the show like better than I've seen almost anyone else run that show. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. just, to me, it's just a huge testament to her. And obviously, I can't sing enough of her praises of how much I appreciate her and how much she, you know, treated us like family and always wanted to hang out with us and never, you know, never backed down from just chilling or going out to Chili's back when we used to eat at Chili's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Chili's got canceled. Chili's got canceled. Um, hey, salute to Mass too. He came on my show, she, she at USC. Um, back when I started my first my first semester there at USC, he actually came on the show as my guest. Um, salute to him for that. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Um, let's move on to the 90th Academy Awards. They were Sunday. They were fun. They were fast. Those and by really fast, fun. I mean it was slow. Yeah. And by fun, I mean it was I. <laughs> um, but we're going to talk about, first of all, I'm going to break this up into two sections, guys. I'm going to talk about the actual winners 
and the nominees and the winners between those and then the show itself this is kind of how i break it up the show uh for this episode so we're going to start out with the actual winners the snubs what you expected what you didn't expect what we liked what we didn't like and then we're going to get into show the hosting the bits the speeches the performances that kind of stuff that kind of people focus on a lot too when it comes to oscars because get i mean oscars go hand in hand with statements and political statements and comments and speeches so let's start out with the winners uh i don't want to talk about every winner because there's too many and there's some that were just so obvious like best actor gary ullman yes well deserved everyone knew who was going to win uh best actress Frances McDormand. yes well deserved everyone knew who she was going to win same with all the actor categories nothing for me to be surprised about the one i want to start out with is the biggest one of them all because i feel like it's fun to start with the big one let's start out with best picture man and the oscar goes to The Shape of Water. Was Shape of Water worthy of winning Best Picture? Uh, worthy? I mean, sure. Um, but I don't know if it's the best movie of the year. I, you know. Were uh, you disappointed when you when you heard Shape of Water? Well, not disappointed. Um, I enjoyed. You Shape picked of Water Shape of Water too. Yeah, I picked Shape of Water. I mean, it's the because safe it's pick. the fa- yeah, safe pick. Yeah. It's, a, it's a favorite. That's kind of the theme throughout this entire Oscars, and I was like, everything it's, was the safe. This pick. is one yeah. of the safest. Oscars I've seen in a long time. Well, a lot of people are going to be like, well, Jordan Peele won. And, this, and I get I get it. it nah, that's you cool. You can totally predict that, though, from a mile away. I, I agree. Some people yeah. didn't agree. I saw a lot of tweets being like, whoa, I can't believe Jordan Peele won. This is so surprising. I thought it was going to be Martin McDonough. And I'm like, nah, Jordan Peele was going to win that yeah, for yeah. sure. But for me, almost every single winner was kind of safe in this Oscar. Yeah. And that's kind of sad, including Shape of Water, which is probably the most celebratory Oscar film out of the Best Picture nominees. Yeah. Would you agree with that? In terms of like... In terms of like, this is like a Hollywood... Yes. Exactly. Hollywood movie yes. kissing... Kissing his own ass. Exactly. Kissing themselves yeah. in the face yeah. on a Hollywood just, movie stage. We get this every year, Ace. Every year. We, we can't go... We can't For, have a Best Picture winner without it being a love letter or whatever to... we What was it? The artist? What was it? Artist? Um, Argo? Um, and then we skip the year when we had 12 Years a Slave, an actual movie. Um, then we go back to Birdman. Then we have Spotlight, I guess, you know. And then we're back but again. Even to... Spotlight is so Oscar baity, though. I, yeah. I love Spotlight. I, I was one of the few people. I chose it to win, and I, I like that movie, but that's but an Oscar baity movie. It's man. Oscar baity, but it's not like a cinema. Sure, you know, sure. Love cinema. And then, you know, last year we almost had the La La Land, La La Land. thing. Um, but I wanted, La- I still want that. La La Land to win, bro. Yeah. I'm going to travel back in time and make La La Land win. Yeah, man. I love La that La movie. Was, La La Land was a great movie, man. Yeah. I, I, I give, uh, I prefer La La Land way over Shape of Water. Yeah, you know, that's the thing, too, man. There's not like a heated passion behind this Oscar season. It really isn't. Um, There wasn't like a big duel like last year, La La Land versus Moonlight. There was that year where it was um, 12 Years a Slave versus Gravity, Birdman versus Boyhood. You know, like very passionate, like head up the base. This one was like, ah, Shape of Water. And then not Get Out, you know? (laughs) How cool would it have been if Get Out won, man? It would have been so cool. Everyone would have been so happy. It's it's the movie that that most people have seen and enjoy. It's both audience accepted and critic accepted. By far the uh, biggest grossing out of all the Biggest grossing one. Um, It it just, to me, it's such a missed opportunity, man. I, I love Guillermo del Toro. Um, and I, I, I just liked Shape of Water. I didn't think it was that great. I didn't even have it in my top 10. You did. Yeah. Um, because I just felt like it was fine. It was a fine movie. It, it's, it's more of a performance movie for me. The story just didn't hit. I never bought the love story between this fish <laughs> creature <laughs> and Sally Hawkins. I just never bought it. I just yeah. never. I still feel like he's, he's a stray puppy who like, you know, you feel really bad for it because he's getting electrocuted. And I'm like, I would save him too, but I wouldn't have sex with him. <laughs> I mean, damn, that's like another level, man. And I just did, it just lost me. I was like, I can't, I can't buy into this, man. Yeah, and yeah. then the whole musical thing too, yeah, with him dancing yeah. around. That, uh, that was when I drew, that's when I drew a line in the sand. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was, I, I, yeah. I, I would have preferred them to have a more daring pick, a more 
generally well liked movie. But then like Adam, like Get Out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Get Out's probably the most universally uh, loved out of the Best Picture nominees. But uh, it's also the most relevant movie of 2017. It's also the most well written movie of 2017, according to the Oscars. It's also the movie that defined the year as a whole, as far as on the political atmosphere as well. And it's also Honestly, out of all the Best Picture nominees, it's the best movie out of the Best Picture nominees, in my opinion. It's the most well-rounded movie, where you could say Dunkirk is probably the most technical movie, but it's not very story-filled at all. And even you can agree with that, and you love Dunkirk, but yeah. it doesn't have a story, man. Like, to me, Get Out was the best movie of those Best Picture nominees, and it's just a disappointment for them to not give it the award and to make... It wouldn't even be a... It could, a lot of people... I feel like people are overusing Get Out as a political statement. I feel like Moonlight was way more of a political statement. Get Out is just a damn good movie. It's just a good movie. Like, yeah. just take out the whole political atmosphere of it, and it's just good. But then, to me, though, if you're measuring Moonlight versus Get Out, like, to me, Moonlight is not even a competition. It's that's, not that's, even, that's, nah. That's Moonlight ten times better than Get Out. Dude, Moonlight um, wasn't even that great. <laughs> it, no, well, it just wasn't. No, nah, come on, man. But, I mean, like, in, terms of, like, in terms of in terms of a, a cinematic, in terms of art, 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 like, artistic. And, again, you know, Jordan Peele's his first mo- movie, first, you know, first horror movie that he he's doing, exploring outside of the comedy genre. So, I give him credit for making such a beloved movie, making such a powerful um, statement piece. Um, that being said, Moonlight is like a, an artistic, you know, is 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 leveled, is complex, is got like like a whole lot of deeper like implications in terms of character and and all that stuff. Like to me, that's that's the, my problem. Like the the, sh- the our La La Land of this year is nowhere near our our La La Land being Shape of Water this year is nowhere near as good as La La Land. Our Moonlight of this year, which is Get Out, is nowhere near as good as Moonlight. Um, I know. disagree wholeheartedly. I think I Moonlight know. was Moonlight is is a, is a sad personal story. Get Out is a genre defying, freaking breaking stereotypes, breaking norms, creating a different type of horror movie that so many people can enjoy and so many people can get something out of. Get Out is the type of movie that I saw it with my mom, and and it's 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 one of the best, it's one of the best movie watching experiences I've ever had with my mom, and that's saying something because watching The Force Awakens with my mom, watching Coco with my mom, and watching Get Out with my mom is the three times that I was just like, she it it it, it she was on the edge of her seat, she was confused about the plot line she was she was into it she was trying to get into the sci-fi sci-fi thriller horror romance heartwarming tale like moonlight doesn't even touch get out moonlight is just a really sad story but i mean and I'm that's talking, it but i'm talking about like from like cinematography from editing from like you know from characters from from acting like you, you don't think that moonlight was the better made movie before get out no oh, man nah, i just I, don't I don't know. I don't Maybe know cinematography, that. but that's it. I mean, I would give it cinematography. I would give it editing. Everything else, story, no. Listen, would I watch character? Would I, no. What I watch? Chris is one of the most likable characters I've ever seen in a movie. But then but I you know, wanted Chris to to it, get out so bad that I was literally screaming like Lakeith Stanfield, get out! True, like, true. I agree. I, I agree. didn't feel I that I, in, in Moonlight. But does Chris have the same kind of complexity, the same kind of dual, you know, conflict inside going on internally as uh, as uh, as Chiron from? Um, for the movie? amount of backstory that you get from Chris versus the amount of like an hour and a half backstory that you get from Chiron, yes. The entire movie of Moonlight is his backstory. Yeah. It's literally his whole life. So that's an unfair comparison yeah, versus a 15-minute scene of, of Chris expressing his life story. And I'm, fe- and I'm on verge of tears, bro. In 15 minutes versus two hours of Moonlight. Listen, would I watch, would I watch Moonlight again? Probably not. Would but, I watch but, Get Out any night of the week? Sure. It's a, it's a more fun movie. I, I don't think can. it's even more fun. I think it's the better movie. I even think it's the better artistically made movie. Ah, uh, nah, dog. Come on, I, man. I, 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 <laughs> You're just, tripping, I bro. I saw Moonlight with you and you thought yeah. it was okay. I thought Moonlight was, yeah, but you know what? That's you were like, what, bro, that movie was okay. Uh, I thought that shit, when I, left, when I left the first time, I was like, man, that shit was too artsy farsy That shit yeah. was like trying too hard. You told but you me. Know what? I, I said Mahershala Ali was the best part of that movie. Yeah. And he was the best part. And he's yeah. in it for five minutes. Oh, he's in it for more. Or five, 20 like minutes. 30 minutes. 20 but, minutes. Like, like, no, no, no. What I will say, though, like, again, you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, in terms of an, an, energy, an 
in, in it's not even factor, it's not even entertainment factor. it's not even enjoyable i totally agree get out's a better movie but from an artistic from like from a cinematic from characters from acting from story from just powerful the way it connects with people i don't know man i say moonlight moonlight was you know I, I, we shouldn't I, compare we shouldn't even compare these two they're totally different they're I totally guess, different but i totally disagree I don't know. Man. I really feel like Moonlight was just. I I thought La La Land was way better than Moonlight. La La Land was just a w- much better film, in my opinion. But that's that. that yeah. Let's just move on because yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a whole different conversation. Well, I think we can agree in terms of best picture nominees. There's some of these you could kind of take out. Um, I okay. Don't know. What, what? I, I, I would take. I would. I would. I would put Blade Runner 2049 in uh, here. Oh no! Nah, all right, all right, all right. I went. I don't know about all that. I've put like I Tanya before that. I'll put uh, F- Florida Project above. Uh, getting a Best Picture nomination over. Um, to me, I finally saw Darkest Hour, man. Darkest I know Hour is baller, bro. I, gangster. Man, that movie's really? gangster. Wait, wait, come on, man. You talk about a movie being boring. Are you Darkest just... Hour. Yeah. <laughs> Darkest Hour was the shit. That nah, movie was awesome. I don't know, man. That movie was I, that awesome. That shit put me to sleep in like, no. the entire like, Winston hour, Churchill bro. trying to battle Hitler, bro. And he's at like freaking the edge of his freaking army. Everyone's dying all around him and everyone's calling him crazy and they're saying that they have to surrender to Hitler and he can't take the image of Nazi flags flying over the UK out of his head. That's just deep shit, bro. I love that movie so much. I was like, bro, there comes a time and a place where you just have to like stare Hitler in the face and be like, not today, Hitler, not today. (laughs) And I felt that in that movie. I was like, man, this is some deep stuff where he when he's in that subway and he's like talking to all those people. I, I felt that, man. And I know that's so Oscar Beatty, but I felt that scene. I was just like, man, this is some this is this is some dope shit. It's some no. dope shit. I don't know, man. Oh, come I on. Just, man. I just can't dog. That shit, oh, I can't. That come shit on. put me to sleep. No. I, I woke up halfway through the movie, shit, had near an hour to go. Oh man, I was I was in torture. Why uh, are you sleeping in the movie? <laughs> dog, I tried. You gotta pay attention. Dog, I tried. I tried. I even gave it a second watch, dog. I don't know, man. To me, it was like, and they shot it so darkly, so and like you could hide the makeup effects. Like, I don't know, man. It wasn't for me. Dark Star was dope. That shit was. I don't know. Uh, it's not even Gary Oldman's best performance. It's he, not, they should have gave it, him an Oscar for True Romance or, or sure, Fifth Element. But it, but it's still the it's still the best performance of the Sid year. Sid and Nancy. Um, I, I think it's the best performance. I, I don't of the even year. think it's better than Daniel Day Lewis. I think it's better than. I don't Daniel even Day. think it's better. I think than it's, like, it's not a lot better, but it's slightly better than Daniel Day. Uh, I don't not know, a lot man. better, but slightly better than Daniel Day. I, but I still feel like Vicky creeps. Took 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 went toe to toe with movie. Daniel Day. She stole, she the, stole movie. the movie, man. Um, but and if and anyone steals a movie from Daniel Day, Daniel Day shouldn't win the Oscar. Here's what I'll say though. You know, we have footage of like Winston Churchill. We have audios recording of, of Winston Churchill. So Gary Oldman had a point of reference to build Shell, his character. So, uh, Daniel but, Day's character is no an original character. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm saying like he's able to fi- make that character feel fully fleshed I think that's out. Completely nuances. If, through, if anything, like, facial expressions do like little. Takes and movements. The you, way I can business. I can debate like, you on that, man. If if anything, it makes it more difficult to imitate without imitate a legendary British icon. That's even harder to do. As everyone knows, how Winston Churchill moves and acts. We even had a point of reference in The Crown, which won you know John Lithgow a freaking Emmy because everyone has an expectation of what Churchill is. If anything, Gary Oldman was at an unfair disadvantage. That's even harder to overcome, especially after following John Lithgow, which everyone loved in The Crown. I don't think any Oscar voters watched The Crown. Are you kidding me? The Crown's <laughs> the shit. That, that, that freaking show was amazing. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what the ratings are. The, the Crown so is amazing, and it's one of the most watched shows I still, on I still haven't watched The Crown. That's, maybe that's just me. But to Darkest Hours, look, to me, it was like I knew the movie was getting watched when like halfway through I'm just thinking man what scene from Dunkirk would just fit right in here like I want to see a cut of somebody putting I feel Darkest Hour honestly, and Dunkirk cutting you, those, you want to hear controversy what's that you want to hear some controversy Darkest yeah. Hour is a better film than Dunkirk oh, oh, I get the Darkest Hour is a better film Peace. than Dunkirk bro <laughs> see you guys later come on man <laughs> The damn squeaking tables calling you oh, back man my bad my bad no uh, I don't know man it's just uh, I, I, I I'm I'm I I don't know from from like an entertainment, I don't know, man. I, I didn't feel the dark. Did you see? Hour. Did you see all the nominees? Yeah, I saw every single one. Honestly, yeah. man. To to be fair, and I, and I know we're we're playing devil's advocate a little bit, but to be fair, all the nominees were pretty solid. 
Phantom Thread, Lady Bird were were in your top yeah, ten. Yeah. Uh, Most of them were. I'd probably uh, say in terms of like the post was was whatever. Oh, the uh, post was great. Did you the see the dark, post? Darkest Hour? I didn't see it. Oh yeah. I see uh, the post. Call Me by Your Name. You liked. I didn't yeah. see it. What would you take out, man? I mean, at this point, um, it's like besides Darkest Hour, what would you take out? Take out Darkest Hour. I mean, I love the post. I don't uh, know if it's. I don't see? know. What, what, what are the other uh, nominations? Uh, what, what, what are the other uh, nominations? Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Let's see here. I I I I I just my point is like. I, Tanya, should have gotten a slot. Coco should have gotten a, a slot. But um, what do you take out? You got to take something I'm out. I'm definitely taking out Darkest Hour. Where are the nominees? Where, where, the, the Call Me By Your Name, of course. I'll probably take out The Post over probably over Coco. Coco. I'll, cook, I'll put Coco in over The Post, definitely. Um, I don't know, man. I feel put like... Put The Florida Project in probably uh, over uh, like anything. I, I feel like the nominees were pretty solid. I don't feel like they were the best, but I feel like they were solid. The only other one I would probably put in there... Would probably be Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I feel like that's the only other movie I could put in there, other than anything else. But let's move on because otherwise we're going to take forever and yeah. talk about everything else. And the Oscar goes to Jordan Peele. Get out. Um, the other big nominee. I'm sorry. The other big one was Jordan Peele for original screenplay. Yeah. That was a big moment just because I felt like that's the one win Get Out got. And that's the one win that everyone expected. And that's the one win that was very, very well deserved. I'm super happy about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, Jordan Peele, you know, surpassed expectations as far as what he could accomplish. And, you know, big shout outs to him for accomplishing that. Yeah, I think definitely out of the original screenplay um, uh, nominees, this is probably far and away the best. Um, Although Lady Bird, I I kind of, there's there's a little piece of me that would have been happy with Lady Bird winning. Only because it didn't win anything else in the night. Um, I mean, what what else was nominated? In, in it was uh, three billboards was in there too. Three, billboard, three board boards, yeah, yeah. That one, that one, that, was, that one could have won too. It, it, was, um, uh, it wasn't the big sick nominated too. The sick, big sick was up there as well. But get out, um, get out was the better. Get out's the best. The, I think get out. It, it, in terms it's from it's super well deserved. And, and shout out to Jordan Peele coming from Key and Peele, one of my favorite comedy shows in recent years that yeah. I I've quoted and I've loved and I've talked about for years. And and he, he makes an Oscar winning script that everyone adores. So shout you, out to did him. Did you see that photo of uh, uh, Jordan Peele and and, and Keegan Michael Key like yeah. hugging? And, yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful. That's image. really cool, man. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> Keegan Michael Key is like, damn, I gotta step up my game. Yeah, I gotta step it up. Yeah, I get to the Oscar level. Um, let's jump over to visual effects, which a lot of people had a controversy with, yeah. including RB three. Yeah. And this is what we gonna debate, bro. And the Oscar goes to. Blade Runner, 2049. John Nelson, Jared Nipsa, Paul Lambert, and Richard R. Hoover. Uh, Blade Runner 2049 won. I picked War for Planet of the Apes for winning because I thought it was going to win. However, I made it very clear in our episode that the winner should be Blade Runner 2049. And the winner that won was a winner that should have won. Blade Runner 2049 deserved that Oscar for visual effects. I understand the accomplishments that motion capture has, that performance capture has, in creating a creature to be so human-like and and for you to feel emotion for it. But Blade Runner 2049 had that perfect seamless effect of visual effects and production design, which it established so well within that movie. The production design in that movie and the visual effects in that movie coincide so much that I do believe the year is 2049 in Los Angeles, California. It feels like that in the movie. And that is 1,000% credit to the visual effects team in Blade Runner 2049. Mic drop moment. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, man. I uh, 150% disagree with you. On oh, come on, man. I think, uh, come on, the man. The visual effects in Blade Runner 2049 are all right. But I think... The original 1982 Blade Runner looks a lot better, will hold up a lot better than this new, the way the new Blade Runner Wow, I 1,000% disagree. With the, the scene where he's like flying through LA is cool. It looks dope. Um, it's not, it's not, it, come on, man. You, you know that shit was made in the computer. And I know so? they use they use miniatures and they blended so was a, miniatures and So was and Planet of the Apes, bro. But CG, but this is my thing. For, for the, the Planet of the Apes franchise, ever since Don, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Rise, Don, and now War for Planet of the Apes, all three of them deserved best visual effects every year they're nominated. Making uh, a CGI um, computer generated ape using motion capture, um, re, re, re revitalizing the game when it comes to motion capture. Because at that point, all we really have for point of reference was Gollum. Um, but now, Warfare Planet of the Apes established. It's so influential what the Planet of the Apes franchise has done. 
uh, the new Kong movie um, is you know takes, Using the same takes the same kind of techniques and the same technology. Um, and that gets that gets nominated for his own Academy Award. Um, so I the feel Last like Jedi. the Last Jedi using with um, Snoke, with Snoke, the Andy Circus, and. They That's have Andy to, Serkis, too. Yeah, you have to recognize Andy Serkis for what he's contributed. I, I agree. Towards. Andy Serkis deserves all the credit. I just feel like you're right. Rise, Dawn deserved the awards when it was nominated. I don't think Rise was nominated, but I think... I know yeah, Rise, Dawn, Rise was nominated. That lost to Hugo. The and then Dawn out. lost to Ex Machina, right? No, Dawn lost to Interstellar. Okay, so... Yeah. Okay, I agree. Dawn should have beat Interstellar, and, and, yes. and Rise should have beat... Hugo. Hugo. Blade Runner beating... Uh, beating what is it war beating war is where they this is the one time that I feel like if anything is gonna beat Planet of the Apes as far as technology for visual effects it's Blade Runner 2049 you're talking about most CGI sure Blade Runner yeah but like but that that's CGI that's credit though I mean uh, uh, making a world made out of CGI that's difficult to do man that's That's hard to do it's difficult but I mean making it so seamless is difficult to do Making it combining. I don't, I don't so think I don't think it's all do. that seamless though, man. It's one thousand percent seamless. The, the computer girlfriend and the, the that the, looked amazing. The whole, the whole scene where her and uh, the other uh, that chick that was, is what won it the Oscar. I, no, that looked I, incredible. I, I think that looks like shit. And I don't know. I, 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 I wow, I don't, dude. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't get it. If I don't you know. guys, I, if you guys know visual effects out there in the comment section, please comment right now how wrong RB three is. Nah, right now. <laughs> I, it's probably, it probably did look okay, but you could have. Whatever, um, but 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 War Planet of the Apes. Listen, you got you got. I'm with you. You, look, you have gigantic armies of apes, and it looks real. And by the way, you know we as humans, you know we have a we have you know it's the whole thing of like uncali valley, right? Sure. Like when we are so familiar with the way something looks, um, it's harder for it to look realistic. Sure. Um, that being said. You know, it, it, those Planet of the Ace movies could really toe the line of Uncali Valley, where we're just really thrown off by them. But it's so seamless, it's so detailed, down to the tiny little wrinkles on, on the close-ups on their faces, the eyes. Most motion capture, most performance capture can't even get the eyes right. That's one thing that War for Planet Apes does. Uh, this, for in terms of a character-driven piece that utilizes the visual effects as this element to drive the story... Um, War for Planet Apes is definitely the better movie for me. All right. And better visual effects. That's a fair argument. I'll take it. Even though Blade Runner 2049 deserved it. <laughs> um, let's talk about Kobe. Yes. Um, so Co- Kobe won an Oscar. And this is some bullshit. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I mean, Dear Basketball was dope. I'll give you that. But to be fair, man, how is Kobe going to lose an Oscar in L.A. with all the voters being from Hollywood and him being a Lakers legend? He's not gonna lose that, man. Hey, man. This this is some this is some this is some Kobe bias right here. Hey man, I love Kobe. Kobe bias. Kobe's the man. Kobe's the greatest of all time. Uh, I changed the, my Twitter header, my background to uh, the Dear Basketball because uh, it's just such a powerful Come film. On, man. Um, the animation is beautiful. Uh, have you seen it? They aired it on of, TV of during I've his. Uh, they aired it on the TV during his. Uh, Retirement, thing, yeah, right? his, for, his, fun, his retirement, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or uh, I'm sorry, when they uh, did retired his, number, his jersey, retired his jersey, yeah. yeah. Um, it just beautiful animation, beautiful story. John Williams at the score, yeah. I um, mean, it, it's a it's a really well done animation. All I'm saying is that all the voters are from Hollywood. Hollywood is L. A. Lakers is L. A. Yeah. All I'm saying is hey. he, he had he had if if there was a if there was a dear Steve Nash. <laughs> I mean, and, and all the voters were from Phoenix. Guess what? Steve Nash is going to win. So, Hey, L.A., baby. LA. See, that's what I'm saying. It's biased. There's some biased shit, bro. <laughs> this is some biased shit. Hey. If I were the freaking animator of the other shorts, I would have been like, this is some bullshit, bro. Hey, man. I've been hey. an animator my whole life, and this freaking Kobe guy comes in here and takes it from me <laughs> as if he's like hitting a freaking game-winning shot in a freaking game seven of a freaking NBA Finals, bro. Hey, man. A is moving, dog. And... You know, it's a nice love letter to kids. You know, kids from the hood could watch something like Dear Basketball and Become Expired. So I'm all for it. Um, let's jump over to cinematography. And the Oscar goes to Roger A. Deakins, Blade Runner 2049. Shout out to Roger Deakins, finally winning an Oscar for Blade Runner 2049. 1,000% well-deserved. He got yes. nominated 14 times, finally got a win. Uh, this guy's been in the game forever. I mean, the movies he shot, man. I know he shot Skyfall. Uh, he shot No Country for Old Men. He shot... What else did he shoot? He shot a ton of movies. Yeah, uh, Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank. Um, uh, and all the Coen Brothers films. Um, yeah, he, he just has a story. All the Most recently, all the Denis Villeneuve That's pictures. right. He shot Sicario. Yeah. Sicario is beautiful. 
It's uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this this guy is a, is a true master. He's a true artist. He's a true visionary. He is one of the greatest DPs I've I've been a part of enjoying all his movies. And it really is a joy to see someone that you recognize his work on a truly visual scale and it finally gets appreciated. If you yeah. know that what that means, right? Yeah. Where, where, where film is such a visual medium and we focus on the story, on the script, on the characters, on the acting. But when it comes to the visuals as far as like DP work, we kind of, unless it's super impressive, we kind of don't take notice. Same with like a score. If the score isn't super impressive, we don't take notice. And that's why someone like Roger Deakins is like a John Williams where his work is super noticeable and it is super beautiful. Like John Williams with making a score. So I really do feel like Roger Deakins is up there as one of the greatest Hollywood icons of all time, not just cinematographers, just icons in general. Yeah, I'll find it out. I mean, he, this, is, this is something I was long in the making. Um, you know, he has a, a plethora of great, great uh, work. Um, he's had a much longer streak of not winning than like DiCaprio or whatever. Um, so I'm, uh, you know, it's really, you know, again, I don't like Blade Runner 2049. I kind of hate it. By the way, I'm so. How can you hate? I, see, <laughs> I know I, I get you, man, but when you say hate, like, <laughs> hate is like Transformers the last night, hate is like the emoji movie, hate is Justice League. <laughs> But Blade Runner 2049? Yeah. I mean, it didn't live up to your expectations. It didn't impress you the way you wanted to be impressed. But hate, bro? Really? Yeah, man. <laughs> like, I mean, hey. if it were Transformers, I'd get you. If it were Monster Trucks, sure. But Or Justice League. I mean, I'm going to keep saying Justice League. Um, what? Hate? 20, 2049? I don't get that, man. I, I will never understand that. Listen, never. I will I never understand that. This is, I think I think a large part of it, well, not not a large part of it, but a lot of people a lot of people even like tweet me like every time you talk about Blade Runner, you have a different reason for not liking it. Of course, because I don't like it for a lot of reasons. Um, but one of the big parts of it is because of like you know, what's the point of making a sequel 35 years later if you're just going to make the same movie over again? You know what I mean? But like, he didn't make the same same, same thematic um, through line, and you're just going to remake the movies that, like, inspired it later on. You're just going to remake her. You're going to remake, you know, it. why does it have the same exact ending as The Dark Knight Rises? Bro, not everyone's... Why does it have the exact same ending or the exact same <laughs> twist as Talia uh, Al Gore in The Dark Knight Rises with um, the lady chick from, um, or the chick from... Um, yeah, from, from Maureen Blade, Courtillard. Yeah, uh, and the chick from uh, from Blade Runner. Um, her 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 whole story. You talking about I'm love? A, yeah, where where like she, the girl who made the memories or whatever, and it comes and turns out that you know I don't want to spoil the. Ending. Oh, you're talking yeah. about uh, that? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the whole misplaced memories and it's even sure. shot the same way. Even skinhead still. Um, so I don't know. I don't. You know. It, you know. You, you, and you from. Uh, you know. After Blade Runner, we got movies like Terminator. We got movies like Her. We got movies from like all these different genres that take from Blade Runner, expand on the themes of Blade Runner. This movie just does it all again and puts it. I would have liked to see it move in a new direction. It does it, it all just, again and it puts it in a Blade Runner movie. That to me is baller. Baller. I I, it's it's we're not moving. It's not moving the culture forward. Wait, to be honest, man. Science fiction. I just saw Her last year, man. I, I gotta tell you, man. Not everyone's. I, I love Her, but I'm saying like, not everyone's seen Her, bro. Yeah. And not everybody's seen Blade Runner. That's true. That's true. Seen but Blade more Runner people have seen Blade Runner twenty forty nine than her, man. Hey, nah, but that doesn't listen. That doesn't matter to me. Look, I saw her. All right, and and to me, yeah, her is you, her. Bro. Her handles the material of the um, computer girlfriend actually being just an illusion, a creation of the um, whatever. It handles that a lot better. Um, to me, the the whole uh, the the whole like it doesn't even have like the same like noir elements. The production design. I mean, I know you like the production design, Blade Runner. The production so, design is dude. Don't no, no, don't listen, shit on the listen. whoa whoa. You Whoa. look at the movie. Talk about that story, but don't talk about that production design. That All production right. design is flawless. <laughs> you look at you look at the original Blade Runner. There's not an inch of that of of any frame that isn't like covered or filled up. Same uh, with the this way, one. No, no, no. The way Denis Villeneuve's direct this movie, it's a lot of empty spaces, a lot of like blank slates, a lot of just wide shots of nothing. You're just I, you're just shitting on on Roger Deakins for making one of the most beautifully. I'm not shitting films. on Roger Deakins. Yes, no, you no, are. I'm saying no. The composition is cool. The the colors is cool. The the lighting is is impeccable. I'm saying. 
saying from like a production design from just what's filling the screen is empty and then, like I don't feel I don't connect that to the same level as I connect to one of my favorite movies Blade Runner and that goes to another wow, point I, there's the camera dang dip, bro I this, mean this is, this you're more salty than a, than a prequel than a guy who just saw the prequels after this, seeing the original trilogy this right? movie's three hours the original Blade Runner is like an hour 53 or something like that much tighter much moves a lot faster than this one um, there's literally a scene where Ryan Gosling's like looking for an egg or whatever for like 15 minutes minutes um, that's a dope scene yeah and there's the camera doesn't move there's no life to it you watch and how can you even compare jared leto to what record howard did in the original jared leto's awesome uh, in this movie compared to the original record howard um you know uh just the life he brought to that uh, you go back and watch that scene where he kills um where he kills the 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 uh Batty. The homie, uh, yeah, where Roy Batty uh, kills uh, the, the other See, homie who who created. You can't even um, think of the name, bro. No, no, no. Fake um, Blade Tyrell, Runner when he, fan. When he, when, he, <laughs> when, he, when he kills Tyrell in his house, and then like the, the way the camera moves, yeah, it's almost like a long take, and the camera like changes, and you kind of get like different kind of framings within the long take. There's no like. There's not, there's none of that in Blade Runner, man. There's no life to it. There's no energy to it. I disagree it feels like, wholeheartedly. It feels like Denis Villeneuve was making the, he made the movie he wanted to make, and salute to him for making that. And again, I think from a visual standpoint, it's great. From a sound standpoint, it's great. Um, but even from an editing standpoint, there's moments where like there's conversations that's happening between characters, and I'm like, wow, that's really cut together in a weird way. I think if the music wasn't here, I don't know how that'll fit. Seems like Hans Zimmer fell asleep on the, on the uh, whatever, on the synthesizer. There's a lot of things I don't like about it, man. But hey, salute to people who like it. Go ahead, you, you know. And hey, well, I'm so keep, keep, people whenever I tweet about Blade Runner, they act like it's a new opinion. How, how are you just not hating Blade Runner? Like, no, I've hated it since the day it came out. I maybe didn't hate it initially, uh, but then again, watching it again I, and again, I'm I, trying to. I'm trying I, to I will it. never understand that, man. I just <laughs> will never, especially after. I mean, dude, I'm telling you, man. After watching movies that that are like giant piles of like tyrannosaurus shit, <laughs> like. Like Justice League, <laughs> I'm never hey. gonna let you down, bro. Yeah, Warner you Brothers. Freaking release the Snyder Cut, bro. Hashtag <laughs> release the Snyder Cut. Like after seeing a movie like that and seeing how what a giant piece of shit that Warner Brothers took on a beautiful franchise and on a genius of a man named Zack Snyder, um, <laughs> and and seeing Blade Runner, I'm like Blade Runner is a work of art compared to something like. Justice League. I don't know. I'm gonna move on, bro. Let's move on to documentary <laughs> hey, if, winner. If you want to get more of my Blade Runner hot takes, I did a whole podcast of Beardo about it when we talked about Blade Runner. Go ahead and check that out. But if you Th- want, just thanks tw- for the invite, Beardo. T- tweet tweet me, and we were gonna <laughs> and we're gonna have a nice discussion online about it. Um, yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> I don't know about nice discussion. Um, my favorite one of the night, man. Well, one of my favorite ones of the night. One thousand percent goes to Icarus. Oh yes, I I literally you saw me retweet this. Yes, I I I freaking found my rant on the Schmozno live show back in September mm-hmm. when I was ranting about. I saw this movie when it came out in August, but I I went on the Schmozno live podcast and I ranted about it about how amazing this movie is. This movie's so freaking good. It is one of the best documentaries I've seen in years. It's so eye-opening and 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 when people don't understand and and it gets me kind of it doesn't get me upset but it gets me frustrated for people who don't get sports people think because there's so it's this is a film community so a lot of people in the film community don't cross over in the sports community i know we do i know people like mark ellis does people like christian harloff does we cross over with sports really well but there's a lot of people in the film community who don't get sports. John Schnapp, Bibiani, they don't get sports. Like, the sports isn't them. And I get that. But this isn't about sports. This documentary isn't. The backdrop is sports. The premise is sports. But what it's about, it's about nationalism. It's about cover-ups. It's about conspiracy. It's about the KGB. It's about you taking advantage of a system that has been implemented for so many years and 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 cheating on the system in order to prove a bigger point about who has the biggest international dick it is just so amazing the way russia will will go to these lengths for a freaking weightlifting competition or for a cycling competition if they're going if they're willing to go this far to cheat to get rid of urine samples to do all this stuff when it comes to Olympic sports, imagine what they're willing to do when it comes to government conspiracies, when it comes to U.S. elections. Oh, no, fuck it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. 
I am I right or am I right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. this, this is a much bigger discussion, I, I feel like. You don't, you don't agree with me? I don't, no, I agree with you. I agree. But I don't think there's... I don't think Russia played a part into, like, hacking our election, though. You know, like... You don't... Did freaking Trump admitted it on Twitter, bro. Nah, man. With the Murray... Mur, uh, the uh, Robert Mueller put out a whole report saying nothing from the Trump administration influenced... I'm not... No, um, I'm not saying that. But the fact is, they did make an actual social media push... To get Trump elected president. That's just fact. I think Twitter trolls. I think that's... But that's Twitter trolls, though. You know what I mean? Like, Tw- But it's Russian-created Twitter trolls. They're memes. They're, they're, they're tweeting memes. I don't think that's... They're tweeting it, articles. I don't they're think, tweeting fake articles. They're tweeting campaigns. Have you seen the how... The fake news, yes. The fake news, yes. That's But that's, that's Russia. But I think there's more... There's American institutions that are tweeting fake news, too. Absolutely. We have, I'm not we saying have there American, isn't. We have American... Um, journalists, we have, we have fucking, I mean, I, I hate to be the guy who's like shitting on like mainstream media or whatever, cause I'm not normally that guy, but like there's I'm a lot I'm not of talking about mainstream, mainstream media, bro. Yeah. I'm talking about what Russia actively does and what Russia actively does is, dude, have you seen Icarus? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. No, I, no, I, no, I agree. No, I agree Russia, with you for, when it comes if, to If to Russia, Russia like, is willing to inject themselves with steroids and then throw away the pee samples and hire freaking agents to get rid of pee samples... I'm pretty sure they're willing to do some gnarly ass shit when it comes to political elections, whether it be their political elections, whether it be our political elections, whether it be anything else when it comes to government conspiracy or when it comes to government in general. Russians go hard, man. I love I love the Russian people, man. I know Russian people here in, in LA and I think they're badass. I love the uh, Russians. I just I'm just saying that Russians go hard. They go freaking hard. And that's what this documentary is all about. It's all about it, what what is what is what is the extent you're willing to go when it comes to athletics to prove a point to prove that I'm better than you when it comes to running up that hill if they're willing to prove a point that much and they're willing to cheat to get there then they're willing to prove a point in other areas in the international elections that's all I'm saying I, I'm uh, not I I, I I trust me dude I'm more on your side than you think yeah, yeah. no no I know Trump I know shit. I know you are yeah because I'm not this weird like you know, super left person who's like, oh, blah, 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 Russia did it. Russia's yeah. doing... No, mm, part of it was Hillary, too. Let's yeah. just be honest. Let's just be was. real. Yeah. A lot of it was Hillary. But I'm just saying that when it comes to... Uh, uh, this this documentary is about nationalism. Yeah, you and how far nationalism yes. is going. Yeah. And if, if you're willing to prove a point by, by, by trying to lift more weights than me, then you're going you're gonna to prove a point by doing other things. This documentary is flawless. It's beautiful. I'm so happy it won. Go on my Twitter at Squad Leader Race to see why. Yeah, no, I no uh, Icarus is definitely. I mean, I called it when we did the. You last did call week, it, and I production. said it wasn't going to win because I didn't think it was going to win. I thought people were going to love the French it, uh, French lady director uh, faces yeah, Agus, places. Agus Verdes, yeah. yeah. Um, salute her though, man. Otis uh, nominee of all time, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no way! I thought yeah. that was Christopher Plummer. I um, I think for in terms oh, for of actor, yeah, that's for, probably uh, what Christopher it was. Plummer. I think it's for acting, but Got it. I think Agus Verdes is like over ninety years old or something like that. Got it. Um, but yeah, great. And Faces Places is a great film. Um, Icarus was my personal favorite documentary of the year last year it's beautiful and, yeah and i think i think it deserves the faces place is also great as well um i definitely thought the 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 election stuff played a pan into why it won um you know uh, the belief of you know the the interference and all that kind of stuff and you know hollywood likes to give middle fingers to like real life politics um but i you but know to I, be fair man like i i get you saying that but 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 watching this movie and watching everything that 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 doctor went through and all that shit russia put the middle finger on themselves man like they they really like if you don't if you don't want to have someone put the middle finger up at you then don't cheat. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you don't, it's like oh well, come on man. What do you mean come on man? They cheated. If if you don't want to be called out, then don't cheat, bro. Yeah, that simple. And my only thing, man, I'm just scared of this whole like red scare thing, like becoming like much bigger than it like actually should be. Sure. And I think we keep pushing. If we keep like, I think if we keep pushing narratives like. You know, of of like this interference or whatever, we're gonna go to a place of war that we don't want to go to. Sure, I think ultimately, like, you know, it, ultimately we're in, we're in a, we're in a tricky place now where if Trump defends Russia and says, "Hey, we're you know it's not really that big of a deal," people are gonna attack him for um, being oh, Poon, you're Putin's puppet, da da da, this and that. Um, but if he if he actively tries to uh, raise aggression with Russia, we're going to end up in World War III. We're not in a good position with it. Um, but that being said, I mean, I enjoy Icarus as a documentary. Um, and you're right. There's definitely a, a strong sense of nationalism that exists throughout that film. And I think that does play into what we're seeing in, like, real life. You know, whether that be interference or not, um, 
I, you know, why I think is just person like Twitter trolling and whatnot, or you know, uh, social media, or, you know, putting out fake news. Please, and st- please keep in mind the intelligence of the American people. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, I, I give people I give people a lot of credit. Maybe you, maybe I shouldn't, but I think I think a lot of Americans can tell when just a meme is a meme or are you a, sure, man? Or, or fake news. Some, Have you seen like, Fox News? Yeah. <laughs> You're, right. You're right. Come on, man. You, you, you Let's be mind. real, bro. You did. You did. Let's be real, man. Uh, yeah. Come uh, on. My only thing is, I, I I become worrisome of like just people shitting on independent media in general, and I think that really the best way to get news today is through independent media. You just have to find reliable sources to get your news from. I definitely think the fake news is a big, big problem. But I think there's also a lot of fake news that happens from mainstream media too. So um, we just have to, I feel like we we have to care like as, as Americans and as, you know, people who want to avoid war, we should tread carefully when it comes to this kind of stuff. We should definitely call out the fake news. We should definitely call out the Russian trolls. Have you seen have you seen House of Cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you seen all four seasons? Of House yeah, of Cards? yeah, yeah, yeah. My 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 point made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is yeah. literally a narrative in House of Cards. Yeah, it is. Yeah, where yeah, where, yeah. where <laughs> Kevin Spacey's under uh, what is his name? Uh, Underwood, Kevin Underwood. Yeah, not Kevin uh, Underwood. Uh, Frank Underwood. Frank Underwood literally does this. He literally gets social media trolls. Yeah. To help win his campaign. Yeah. yeah. As a, as a way to like create narratives and create little stories and create yeah. little fake stories and little hashtags and that shit works, bro. That's that true. shit works. It's true. That shit works. I mean, you know, there, I think there's definitely a case to be made with that. Um, but wasn't but, but, it something but, like? But, but I, I do I do agree with you. I feel like that's blown out of proportion. Yeah. I feel like the presidency was won. Sure, Russia had a hand in, as far as like you know creating little narratives and shit. But at the end of the day, Trump won because Trump won. Trump won because he had a base that supported him more than Hillary's base. Trump won because Hillary had burned more bridges than she built. Trump won because he related with more people than Hillary did. He Period. went po- he went populist with his with his Period. stuff, and even though he lied about it. That's what got him elected. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could. I mean, obviously, Trump is a big part of last night. I, I want to get into it. Let's yeah. get into it right now. Um, let's talk about politics. Let's talk about Oscars. Oscars will always have some sort of political statement. Will always have some sort of statement in general, whether you like it or not. If you don't get that, then you have never seen the Oscars before. So I recommend you tune out of watching the Oscars because you probably got a dose of it on Sunday. So let's talk about that because you texted me the other day and you even tweeted tweeted this out. You said that you think they went too far as far as Trump bashing. I didn't see it, but maybe I'm blind. I don't know, because I'm usually on your side when it comes to too far right, too far left. Because I feel like sometimes, let's face it, Hollywood goes a little too far left. Um, what are you talking about? What, what do you feel as far as on Sundays, Sunday night's award show for the Oscars that they did too much Trump bashing. Well, it's just, I mean, I don't think it's, I don't, I'm not saying it's too much Trump bashing. Well, that's what you Trump said on Twitter. You said that they, they bashed well, they're, Trump they're, too well, much. Well, they're, they're making too many jokes about it. I think if you want it, you don't give the guy attention if you what really don't like him. What jokes did they make? Him. Well, I mean, the whole opening monologue was like Mike Pence, Trump, fucking, uh, uh, uh. What, what, what specifically though? Huh, let me pull up this specific so, oh, jokes. Oh, oh, I, I, oh, I pretty oh. much tuned out after I heard a couple of, but here's my thing, man. I'm so sick of, of, of movies and TV shows feeling that you know they have to relate to real world politics. So, oh, let's let's talk about Trump. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, if you really if you really feel about a certain type of way about it, make sure that you have like a platform and a base that's actually about policy and not about you know tone policing. What he says is you know or or, or whatever. Um, what do you mean? You know, I like you're gonna keep you're gonna keep uh, ragging on the guy for you know his affairs of like Stormy Daniels or you know like was that mentioned weird... on Sunday? Well, I don't think it was mentioned, but like I'm just talking about it in general. Um, well, I'm uh, talking about Sunday, bro. Oh, particularly on Sunday, yeah, sure. I I feel like yes, you know, you're, you're right. Um, there there wasn't a lot of like him, but it's more what? of like tone tone policing him as, as far as like oh you might be racist, oh you you're not saying things that make me feel good about you know Hollywood or whatever. Like they keep going to the Meryl Streep thing for like that's it's like the low hanging fruit. You know what I mean? They're, they're going for like the most obvious jokes how like Hollywood would have towards Trump. Like the whole thing of like oh Lupita Nyong'o was born in Mexico uh, but raised in Kenya. That means she'll be a perfect subject for Trump's like Twitter or something like that. You know what I mean? Like. That's stupid. What's the, what's the point? What do you like? I don't get what. Like I don't know. Like if if you if that makes you feel so uncomfortable, if Trump makes you feel that uncomfortable about the way you feel politically, like I don't know what's the point. I mean, obviously Jimmy Kimmel is big on roasting Trump, and I get that. Um, but I just don't think like if if like why? What's the point of? 
I don't know, man. It's like, what's the point of keep making jokes about it? He, you're, you're, you're pandering for a response, and it's, it's kind of killing entertainment for me, man. It's killing Mr. It killed Mr. Robot season three a little bit for me. Eminem's album was garbage because all it was was dissing Trump, and even this Academy Awards, man. Um, it, like, like this, this joke right here. Uh, none other than President, not, none other than President Trump called "Get Out" the best three fourths movie of the year so far. Um, <laughs> that was funny. It, it's funny, but it's like, come on, man. Are we really going to keep going for the low hanging fruit that this entire, I don't know. Um, to me, it's just like, I don't, I don't, I don't see the appeal of like constantly trying to get at Trump, trying to get at Republicans, trying to get at the right. Um, just celebrate the movies that are coming out and celebrate the relevancy of these movies. And if you really have such a big problem with what they're representing, um, if you have such a big problem with what politics are, are resembling, do something internally to change that within the Hollywood structure. Make more pictures, make more movies that um, address that more head on. Um, and if you, and you know, you don't I think they're doing that. I, I well, I think they were moving in that direction. Um, but then again, it goes back to like the whole shape of water versus get out kind of thing. If you're really going for more, if you really meant what you're talking about in terms of um, being this like super liberal, like, oh, we believe in the most upright justice, um, then, you know, then get out is what what's at the tip of everybody at, at everybody's tongue. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just, you know, we've it, the, the Academy Awards are 90 years old. We've only had five African-American nominees nominated for Best Picture, only five women nominated for Best for best Director. I'm sorry, for Best Director for African-American nominees, um, five um, directors of uh, women directors nominated for best D- director. Um, there's a lot more that you could change, and I think you should start looking at yourself more than you're looking at the external politics to like get a couple of low hanging fruit jokes. Um, you know, if, if to me, it, I feel like the energy could have been more spent um, addressing the Me Too movement, addressing Times Up, addressing um, the actual problems. They did. They definitely did, and I, I applaud them. For, I think the speeches. Did a great job at at at, at um, including that. I think it's particularly Francis McDormand's speech, also too with the inclusion writers, is really really cool. Um, and I think there's definitely a new wave uh, in going at that. But I think you know if you're going to focus this much attention on Trump, also focus as much attention on what is um, what what problems are you dealing with too. So you know what I mean. Problems as sense. far as like what is Hollywood themselves? Yeah, what is with? Hollywood? What do they know? have to address themselves? Yeah, and I'm not one of those kind of guys who are just gonna be like, oh, the Hollywood elites. No, 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 not at all. But I definitely do think that um, before we start shitting on other people, let's let's take a look. That's how I feel like in general, just in life in general. Like, you know, look at look at what's hap- what's look in the mirror before you look at uh, start judging the other people. So. That's how yeah. I kind of feel. So what do you what would you have preferred them to call out as far as Hollywood? Um, I mean they they had they had some I don't know, man. I, I really would have liked to have seen them say something about just the fact that, you know, Kevin Spacey has won a ton of Oscars. He's won like two, if I'm not mistaken, or, or nominated for a lot more. Um Harvey Weinstein is a staple at the Academy Awards. You know, I wish maybe not a segment dedicated towards addressing it, but at least uh, you know what didn't I mean. They, like, didn't Kimmel mention Harvey? He did. He? Yeah, he did. He did. It was like a joke, a quick joke. Yeah. But, um, you know what I mean? Like, I wish that, you know, for all the times that were, su- and, you know, again, maybe maybe I'm contradicting myself because maybe I'm just saying it should be a celebration of movies, a celebration of, you know, film. But um, I definitely do think that the heart, I think that if when it comes to the bigger topics of uh, the Me Too, of the Time's Up, of, of the larger uh, kind of accusation waves that's been happening, I wish they would have. You know, I kind of wish they would have put like people like Rose McGowan to the forefront, put people like the victims who are coming out and speaking out against this and put that into the forefront, celebrate the celebrate those people. And um, and, you know, kind of I mean, I don't know what internally the Oscars are doing to to address the, the problems of like Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey. They've obviously awarded plenty of times in the past, um, but I just kind of wish they would uh, at least address that and mention that in some sort of way before taking digs at. Um, at a president that probably isn't going to watch the award show anyway. Yeah, I agree. Am I making sense to you? I mean, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I get what you're saying. You're, you're, you're saying that that it's too, it's too much of an attention towards someone who shouldn't even get the attention. Yes, someone who doesn't even deserve the attention. Yeah, and who shouldn't be received it. I, I, I get it. Yeah, I, I do feel like there's, there, there. Hollywood has a narrative that they like to go into where it's support everything on the left, set, make really broad statements of diversity and of pro-women and of pro-choice and of pro-all this stuff, and then don't follow through when it comes to actual actions and when it comes to actual 
uh, decisions, right? Because when it comes to decisions as far as making statements, they Hollywood is pretty behind on that stuff. I mean, look at Weinstein and Weinstein's the master of that shit. I mean, that guy donated to different places. That guy probably believed in everything that the left and the democratic side of politics said, and yet he's one of the biggest creeps, you know, that you know the country is known about. So Hollywood does have a bad tendency of not looking at themselves in the mirror enough. That is true. That is very true. Um, however, I will say, I, I want to make something clear, especially after Sunday's awards, on a personal level. And I feel like this is something that's been overlooked. And I tweeted about this. I don't know if you saw my tweet when I said this about Latinos. Mm. I, I feel, and I really do feel like I'm not the only one, especially when I got responses on my, on my tweet when I said this. Uh, when it comes to Latinos, man, I don't think people understand where we come from. And it kind of pisses me off a little bit because especially when it comes to diversity, mm -hmm. when it comes to diversity, people are so obsessed with saying, look at Black Panther. Look at this. Look at that. We're so diverse. We're so cool. We're so inclusive. Look at Get Out. We're, we're changing. We're the best. We're the shit. I read a comment today saying that Guillermo del Toro isn't a person of color because he doesn't look like a person of color. That pissed me off. Why? Because because he's not dark skin. Because he's not what what what, what is the, what defines a person? What defines diversity according to you? If we can play off as white, we're white. I'm not white. I'm I'm 100 Latino. What what makes what makes diversity? And I feel like Latinos have been the backbone of this nation for so many years. Latinos have put in work. Latinos sacrifice their lives, sacrifice their livelihood, focus on family, focus on tradition, are super religious or super Christian or super Catholic, believe with a lot of what the right says as far as on a religious atmosphere, as far as a religious base. And yet, when it comes to diversity, we talk so much about diversity and Latinos are the most overlooked. It, 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 so many films have come out throughout the years, so many narratives that have come out throughout the years as far as television goes. Breaking Bad, we're drug dealers. Sicario, we're drug dealers. Every movie we're coming out, we're coming out with Gringo, the new movie coming out with... with no, oh, is that Mel Gibson? Is that Mel Gibson? Yeah. No, uh, with, uh, what's his name from? Uh, David Oyelowo. Oh, um, right, 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 right. We're right. drug dealers. We're never going to let that Hollywood narrative down that we're drug dealers. That's the kind of diversity we see. And when it comes to diversity in general, as far as getting representation and the proper representation of seeing leading roles and actual Latino field roles with Latino field characters, with Latino field personalities and characteristics, an actor like Oscar Isaac, who is 100% Guatemalteco and he's Latino, and he comes from that background and he speaks Spanish, being put in roles that dumb down his Latinoness. I'm not shitting on Oscar Isaac. All props to him. I love him as a brother. But but it's one of those things where I do feel like sometimes we're the most overlooked type of nationality because we're not the most exuberant on screen as far as having the most visually striking person of color look that people are looking for, like an Asian, like a Middle Eastern brother, or like a black homie. Like, we don't have that striking look. We can play off as white. Oscar Isaac can play any nationality because he's Oscar Isaac. And it's like, that's some bullshit, man. Like, we, there, there has to come a point right now as far as, as Hollywood in general, where Hollywood jerks itself off saying that di they're so fucking diverse. And yet, we don't have a voice as far as the Latino people. And, 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 and I'm bringing it back to Trump because of this. So many people, as far as on the left, so many, and, I, and I'm, I'm sorry to do this, but I'm going to do this, it, it, it have such a chip on their shoulder when it comes to whether it's CNN with Trump is out to get us and poor, poor us, or where it comes to other types of people and other types of oppressed groups of people who come out and say that Trump is out to get them and all this shit that's probably true. Bro, I'm sorry, man, but, but Trump didn't call you rapist. Trump didn't say he's going to build a wall to keep you out. Trump didn't say that you're bringing the worst of the worst in this country. Trump didn't literally declare war on you as far as a race of people. Trump didn't take his first national address to the nation. What was it? State of the Union address? No, he exactly. literally take the first State of the Union address and the first people he calls out is Latinos. Is, is, is he's saying that Latinos and, and, and illegal immigrants are killing our white women, basically. That's some, that's some racist ass shit. 
I will never stop saying this, but Paul Ryan, yes, Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, when asked about Trump's comments towards the Mexican judge last year when he was running for president, and when he was asked, what do you think of Trump's statements as far as saying that he can't do his job because he's, he's Mexican, Paul Ryan said he was racist. Paul Ryan said that Trump said textbook definition of racism is what he displayed. What I'm trying to say is we're literally a group of people that 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 when when people talk about diversity and when they talk about oppression, where 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 everyone's like, oh, well, this and that and this and that, bro. You've never been in a situation where you speak Spanish and you're glared at because you speak Spanish. So don't come at me with with some bullshit of like, oh, but you haven't blah 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 and, and all this shit that Trump is doing to me, poor me. And it's like, bro, no. I mean, there's a group of people called Latinos who who get daily persecution and who are overlooked in, in one of the most places that celebrates diversity, that's Hollywood. That's some bullshit, man. I'm telling you right now, it's some bullshit. And, and it's one of those things where it's like, when are we going to get proper representation? Finally, we get something like Coco. And even Coco is not even getting the right amount of representation that we got. What I'm saying is that on Sunday night's Oscars too, we got Gael, Barcia, Gael Garcia Bernal, we got Oscar Isaac, we got... Chile getting a, a fantastic, oh, fantastic woman. woman yeah. We we got uh, Eugenio Derbez announcing the the performance of Miguel, uh, singing uh, "Remember Me." Remember me. Um, yeah. We we got uh, you know the creators of Coco. One of one of one who is Mexican. One of them is Mexican. We we we're 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 trying to chip away at, at this narrative that so many people overlook because it's not as sexy as other diverse issues or other diverse groups of people. And, and I feel like that is something that should be stopped being overlooked. And as a Latino guy who's extremely passionate, as you can tell, <laughs> it's something that has kind of like been on my nerves a little bit. That, that, a, that a place that is so left and that is so diverse refuses to celebrate that diversity of Latinos on a full scale because it's not as cool and sexy as other groups of people that will bring in more money. Bro, we'll pay it. We'll pay money, bro. Ask Fast and Furious. Yeah, Fast and Furious. <laughs> Fast and Furious yeah. is like, bro, you put two Latinos in Fast and Furious and you get millions of Latinos watching that movie. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't, if you put two Mexican songs in Fast and Furious or Latino songs and you get millions and billions of dollars in that movie. So trust me, we'll come out, we'll support and we'll pay money to see it. And for me, it's like, when are we going to get an Oscar Isaac in a performing role where he's playing a Latino badass? Let's get that fucking movie. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Mic no, drop. <laughs> no, no, no. I definitely think the I think the on camera diversity is probably one of the biggest lacking places for um, for for Latinos and you know even for Asian Americans too. But particularly for Latinos, it's uh, you know you're right. The, the the stereotypes that are being put on to um, Hispanics uh, in, in in this country and and Latinos in this country uh, are are you know are what the president is saying. The images that he's putting out. Um, I definitely think that. If Hollywood, uh, and you're right, Hollywood should start telling more stories about people who are not drug dealers, people who are not, you know, uh, you know, ra you know, or, or criminals or whatnot. That's all we see uh, on, on on television, on film. Um, I'd I'd almost like to see, you know, now we have Black Panther coming out. Let's let's start to see a Latino superhero kind of break big, break big, and, and make waves. Um, and 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 I think, um, I mean, obviously. Um, African American representation is probably at an all time high on camera um, than was probably ever been in any time in history. Um, I think definitely if if you start capitalizing on other minority groups as well, um, there's a lot of revenue to be made there. And not only to mention that, I mean, look at how uh, relevant people, uh, how how much people attach to something like Coco, right? Um, even the whole performance with the second half of the song they performed in uh, Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's I mean that's that's just a simple little move that um, could really uh, Make I'm sure a lot of people, um, people from a Hispanic background, feel really good. Um, and you know, obviously, um, there are. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of um, Latino directors who are winning Best Director as of recently. If I'm not mistaken, last four out of five uh, directors of the Best Director. I mean, we got talent, man. Yeah, we got yeah. talent. There's no um, denying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's. I think there's definitely a um, a much bigger need for uh, for on camera um humanization and, and representation um because if you don't make stories of people in the leads you know have 
um, a lot of humanization for uh, people, you know, and I think that's for further generations too, when it comes to representation, further generations to see down the line that people fit, can feel special and feel represented. I think uh, Camille Ninjagi said it best in that, in, in, his, in his part in the Oscars. And I think, I think when they address stuff like that, I think that's when the Oscars is at his best. You know, when he said, um, you know, he grew up watching um, movies about straight white men made by straight white men. And relating uh, to straight And relating men. to straight white men. Um, now it's your turn to see, to, to relate to somebody who looks like me. And, and, and I and think it, that's important. That's such a good line, too, because it, it, this isn't about taking, taking white people away from movies or taking white people you know white movies away or anything that's not that's not what this is about at all i i i I love batman batman's white i love superman superman's white as hell i mean i I, there's so many characters that i look up to spider-man spider-man's white my whole life peter parker's the whitest homie alive but i i love watching him and i and i really relate to that character it's the same when it comes vice versa i can relate to to now other white people and me can relate to someone like t'challa or someone like killmonger or someone like nakia or someone like uh, shuri it, 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 it's the same thing. It, it shouldn't be different just because it's a different race of people. I feel like there's such a, especially when it comes to narratives, I feel like the, the narrative on the right is such a like, oh, there's got to be black though. And I'm like, bro, I mean, there's so many different white people too. And black people love white people. Why can't white people love black people? Like this, this is not, this isn't mad scientist. This is some basic ass shit. Yeah. So all I'm saying is, is, is you have actors and, and there can be roles that can be portrayed for them when it comes to positivity and when it comes to leading performances. I just saw Annihilation. Oscar Isaac is in Annihilation. Why wasn't he Latino in Annihilation? (laughs) Basic stuff like that. And that's such a small role that he has in that movie. But all I'm saying is that uh, little changes here and there by by tweaking, tweaking little character moments, character names, character backgrounds can, can make a world of difference. Someone, I'm telling you, man, Diego Luna in Rogue One was just uh, just day and night. Uh, uh, Pedro Pascal in Game of Thrones playing Oberyn Martell was such a delight. And I know you haven't seen Game of Thrones. Yeah. But but I'm telling you, man, Oberyn Martell in Game of Thrones, just so you get the reference, it com- comes into this show f- after four seasons. And this guy is Latino. Well, technically, he's not Latino, but that's what makes it even better. He's Latino. He's a prince. He's the smartest man on the planet. And he's the best fighter in the show. And it's like, holy shit, when he came into that show, for me, dude, personally, watching that, like, this is me, you know, being like, what, 21, 22 years old when he came out in season four, being like, holy shit, I can relate to a character and I can cheer for a character who's a badass and who's Latino and who's not trying to steal some guy's, you know, wallet or some shit. He's a prince. He's the richest homie on the planet. He's the smartest homie on the planet. And he can kick your ass. And that's the type of roles I want to see Latinos have. And, and, and it's such an easy change. It's such an easy little character switch that they can put in. That, and you have the actors for it. It's not like you don't have the actors for it. So that, that's just what I want to see. And I feel like Coco might be the first step to that. But it's an animated movie. I mean, we could do this in live action. We can do something different. So I, I just want to see more representation when it comes to Latinos. And, and when it comes to, to having that in the forefront. Because I do feel like we're such a big population and we're such a powerful motive. And Hollywood is get literally is like, we're diverse now. Guess we fixed the problem. And it's like, no, 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 you're not. You're, you're, no, you're not. You're, you're much far off. Yeah. And, and you still have to, to really push the Latino people. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, definitely um, more on-camera representation for Latinos. I'm hoping for a little more off, off-camera, like behind-the-scenes stuff for, for black people. Of course, you know, we have a lot of on-camera talent, um, stars and whatnot, but like I said, Jordan Peele is only the fifth nominee in 90 years uh, that we see of an African, or I'm sorry, of a black director um, being nominated for a Best Director. I'm hoping that moves a, a little forward in, sure. as well, too. Um, I, I honestly thought last year would have been the year for uh, for Moonlight uh, with, with Barry Jenkins, and I think this year could have been the year for, for Jordan Peele, too, but um, Guillermo del Toro definitely deserved his Best Director nom- his best director win. I almost feel like they should have, you know, Shape Water is cool. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. It's my number eight in my top ten of last year. Um, I almost kind of feel like, though, he should have won the Oscar back when Pan's Labyrinth was, um, when, sure. when Pan's Labyrinth was, was, was around. And that could have been, um, especially a movie of star, from, from Spain, you know, Span, Spaniard, right, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Pan's Labyrinth, that could have been a movie that celebrated a lot more, um, I guess, of that diversity kind of. And stuff too yeah yeah it's just a, it's an opportunity to, to to have different groups of people and different voices and i think it's such an easy switch dude zoe zoldana is like super latina yeah like let's have zoe zoldana play 
some roles. Man. She was in that one, uh, Colombiana, though, yeah, right? She was Columbiana. in Columbiana. Yeah, yeah, that movie's badass. Um, but she's, I mean, that's another one who, like, come on, man, we we got the talent. We we we've proven before that we 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 got enough talent. We've proven it with with so many different talented people. We can put them in roles, and 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 it's so many different types of Latinos that live in this nation, and so many different backgrounds that they come from. That uh, uh, this Oscar, if anything, it reminded me, especially with Coco, with Remember Me, with Gal Garcia Le Bernal, with Chile, w- with with Oscar Isaac saying Viva Latino America, with with all that kind of stuff, with Eugenio Derbez, it, it really is one of those things where it, now is the time more than ever. So I'm gonna stop that rant. Um, real quick, let's talk about um, song performances of the night. Uh, one of the favorites of people's. Um, what was your favorite musical performance? Um, hey, man, I said last week that my favorite song of the nominees is Mystery of Love from um, Stephen Stevens, man. Um, Which one's it? Oh, yeah. that's the Call Me By Your Name folk song? Yeah, yeah, Really? Yeah. That's your favorite? <laughs> yeah, man. That shit is beautiful. Um, is that your favorite performance? Yeah. Shit. Really? Yeah. It I, was cool. It, it wasn't bad, but... Um, remember Me was a great performance, too, sure. like, from a visual standpoint. A lot of... I, I saw some people shitting on, on Gael. Uh, saying he's not uh, a good singer. No, I think the singing was great, man. I, I think, thought he was fine. My mom yeah. texted me. And he's like, he's not a singer. And I'm like, mom, he's, he sings great for an actor who's never sang. He yeah. sings pretty good. Yeah. He's not Miguel. Like, yeah. Miguel's a singer. Right, right, right. But, but he's, still, he's still not bad. Yeah. No, I thought it was good, man. I, I thought it was good. Uh, I, I, I can't lie, though, man. If I'm being honest, the one that stole the show, you know what I'm going to say. Which one? I haven't even seen the damn movie. But This Is Me? Oh, that uh, shit was baller. That shit was cool, yeah. You didn't like it? I mean, it was cool. I loved it, dude. Yeah, I thought it was a little weird when all the people came out in the end. Oh, I loved it, bro. I would have hugged them people, man. (laughs) I would have been like, come here, man. Yeah. I was the one mudbound uh, with, with, with Com- Mary J. Blige. Yeah, yeah. Common Luther King out there preaching to the folks. Stand the fuck up, Academy. Stand up. Stand the fuck up. Like, I would have like, stood up everybody too. Everybody uncomfortably like standing in the audience. That, that wasn't was, Mary, that wasn't Mudbound. That was a uh, uh, good Marshall something like oh, that. Oh, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mudbound was a different one. I yeah. just thought it was funny. It was just like stand up, Oscar, stand up. And like, everybody's like. Okay, I guess we're standing. <laughs> to be to be honest, man, that's another thing, bro. If Common is telling you to stand up, stand up, yeah, man. Yeah, Common Luther King, man. Come on, Common you can't Luther you can't King. you can't sit down during an Oscar performance, man. <laughs> if it were me, I would have stood up for the freaking "Call Me by Your Name" folk song. Like yeah. I would have stood up for all the songs. Yeah. Like people need to get off their butt and stop being so comfortable. Yeah. Oh man, the Major Blige one though. Okay, maybe that's why I confused it. That one, that one kind of hurt. Why? I don't think she she, she killed it. She uh, killed it, bro. Uh, no, no. It ain't the same Mary J. Blige. Oh, like come on, man. Ago, you know I mean? mean, the song's okay, but she sings. She's she a little sings. pitchy. She was a little pitchy. What? She was a little pitchy. Compared to Folk Boys from Call Me By Your Name? Hey, man, he was great. <laughs> Salute to Stefan Stevens, dog. Uh, all right, man. Let's talk about Kimmel. What do you think of Kimmel? Uh, he was good, man. I mean, I'm glad, you know. Oh, man. But I don't know. Actually, maybe I shouldn't say. I thought he was all right. I thought the I thought he was okay too. Yeah. I, I I I've I've been a fan of Jimmy Kimmel since I was fourteen. Yeah. I've been watching him for years and years and years. I love Jimmy Kimmel like from a bottom like from a personal level. Yeah. Um. But he was okay. I, I thought his opening monologue was fine. I thought his bits worked better than his opening stuff and his dialogue stuff. I thought his gags. What do you think of his gags? Um, the the theater gag and then the jet ski gag. Oh, the jet ski gag was That hilarious. jet ski gag was there. That was funny. That yeah, was funny. That was really well. good. Uh, to be honest, man, I was telling my friends at, at the Oscar party that I went to, I would have been like, I love you, mom. Yeah, <laughs> Peace. Yeah. You get that jet ski. Peace, bro. <laughs> I want that jet ski, bro. I'm yeah. going to get that stuff. I'm going to sell that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that one. So, okay. Yeah, that was a funny. I didn't think the theater one worked, though. I okay. thought that was a little stupid. Um, especially because they gave, what was the guy's name? Mike Young or whatever. They gave that full whole fucking screenplay to read. Like at the end, oh, they yeah. were like, hey, re- introduce the next presenter. He's like, um, from the, uh, I, <laughs> they gave this dude a whole script to like read, like before, int- it, he just couldn't say like, the, they also, the, yeah, it wasn't like the Pia Nyong'o and, and Tiffany Lu- Haddish or the Tiffany Haddish Rudolph. and Maddie Rudolph. Yeah, yeah, like he couldn't just say that. <laughs> I thought it was a little crazy. Um, um, also, and, like passing out hot dogs and sandwiches. To yeah, yeah. Hey, in take, the middle of a screen. Poor people, take this food. Yeah, take it. <laughs> Nothing like rich Hollywood elite actors throwing out hot dogs to a crowd of movie theater people. Yeah, that, I, I thought it was funny. I don't know if you saw a little gif of like uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Gal Gadot, and 
uh, and uh, Luke Hamill shaking hands. That was uh, great. I'm oh, sorry, Luke, Matt, Mark Hamill. Mark Luke, Hamill. Sorry, yeah. I, I adore yeah. Mark Hamill. One of these days, I, 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 he's going to like, I'm going to message him on Twitter and he's going to message me back. One of these days, Mark Hamill. <laughs> Have you been um, messaging him now? I've been messaging him since I was 15 years old. No, I'm playing. <laughs> since before Twitter was a thing. No, um, yeah, I, I love Mark Hamill, man. I really do feel like he's a, just a genuinely, his his panel at Star Wars Celebration is probably my favorite panel that was there. Did you see his panel? For no, Star Wars? I didn't. No. It's so good, man. Obviously, yeah. I wasn't at Star Wars Celebration, but I saw it on on YouTube. It was so good. It's mm. so much fun to hear a genuinely older dude tell stories about his. He, he remind. I don't know why he reminds me kind of of my dad. Like my dad's super quirky. Yeah. And he, Mark Hamill's really quirky, and uh. he's kind of like the same age as my dad. So he just, I don't know. I love Mark Hamill, and he's just a super cool guy. Yeah, yeah. No, and um, Gal Gadot, shout out to Gal Gadot, who, um, you know, was like, hey, I'm not going to get my Best Picture nomination, so <laughs> I'm going to throw out some gummy bears at people. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to talk. She said three times. She was like, this is so much better than the Oscars. Am I right, guys? <laughs> she said it three times. And then she was like, Jimmy's like, well, hey, guys, this is really fun, right? And he's like, this is so much better than the Oscars, right? Guys? She yeah. kept saying it. And I was like, all right, girl, all right. A little salty. Wonder Woman not getting a nomination. I get it. I get That's it. That's funny. Um, it didn't deserve it. It didn't deserve um, it. I 100% agree. You know what's funny though, man? I, I, I honestly, I thought it was a... Uh I don't know what you thought about the whole opening thing with like the black and white with Jimmy Kimmel doing the oh tell me about from the nineteen fifties. That wasn't Jimmy Kimmel. That was a uh, Mario Lopez. Oh, Mario Lopez. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I like that. That was funny. Yeah, I don't know. Man. That's what? Kind of stupid. I think in past like past show openers. I think last year how they opened it with the Justin Timberlake song "Can't Fight the Feeling." Well, that, that's different. That was that's awesome, a musical though. number, though. Yeah, but I mean that was an awesome way to start the show. Like you're kicking off with this. What low would energy. you have start? Started the show with when you well, like a there. montage, common being like, Stand up, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Oscars, no. you suck, chump. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up for what you believe in, son. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, um, I don't know, man. You could have, I don't know, maybe not start with did a you song. See, but with dude, a montage. Did you see, and I know I'm the only one, did you see the Lonely Island song that they were gonna do? Oh, no, which one? You didn't see it? No, nah. oh, bro, I'm gonna have to show you after the show. But Lonely Island made an Oscar opening. Oh, really, dude, it uh. is. It, and they said that they didn't pick, get picked because yeah. it was it was going to cost too much money. Yeah. You'll see why it was going to cost too much money because yeah. it's kind of crazy what they were planning to do. Yeah. But I'll show you after the show, man. Yeah. If you want, you can tweet about it. But it is legendary. It is <laughs> hysterical. So basically the premise of it was... Well, I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to okay, spoil all right, it. All right, all right, I'm going right, to let it go. But right. they had an o- opening Oscar number uh-huh. that was going to go down in history. Really? It was going to go down in history. Dude. Lonely funny. Island was about to drop all the mics all over the world. <laughs> it would have been the biggest thing ever. Oh, I'm not even man. kidding. I'm not exaggerating. It was so funny. I highly recommend you guys checking out the Lonely Island YouTube channel where they put out the, the potential Oscar opening number song that they were going to do. But um, yeah, I think that's all the notes I had as far as what went down. Shout out to Mark Bridges for winning the uh, for winning the jet ski. Uh, Mark oh, Bridges, yeah, the designer for speech, Phantom Thread. Yes. Was that thirty six seconds? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Mark Bridges was the guy who was at the Q and A when I went to the Q and A. I was gonna ask him about clothes because he had a Q and A. But it was him and Vicky Creeps when I went to see Phantom Thread. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Shout out to Vicky Creeps, um, <laughs> who was there and who was super freaking, you know, foreign. Uh, I still love her though. I think she's great. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Mark Bridges who rode out in the Oscar with Helen Mirren and uh, oh right and a jet, jet ski, ski. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah what is that that uh, Tory Lane song booty popping on a jet ski <laughs> oh, right, right I know what you're um, talking about I know um, oh man did I tell you I met Helen Mirren in in, in in the elevator one time what yeah 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 that's amazing I was man. at USC and then they had like the graduation did you actually event. like introduce yourself well to I was her? like hi how you doing and then she and then, I didn't like shake her hand I was like hi but like to me I was like I was so kind of sh- I was like is this is really Helen Mirren I, I can't believe it you know what I mean I was kind of starstruck but I stood stood the with her, like I went two floors up. She was on the next floor. Up. I guess she was meeting with the school of Mac Arts president or whatever. Uh, but then it was just like it was crazy. So I was like, "There's no way I could have been Helen Mirren." And she like she like after I was like, "Hi, how you doing?" She was like, "Hi," and she like smiled and like did that. I was like, "Oh shit!" So then like as soon as I left, as soon as I left the elevator, I was like, "It's Helen Mirren at USC." And like it's her stamp pop. So she's at the graduation. I'm like, Dog, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, the yeah. one I had in the elevator was uh, Macy Williams and Sophie Turner. But oh, I didn't really? meet. Remember that Comic yeah, Con? Yeah, yeah. You were there. Yeah. Wait, yeah, no, yeah. Were well, you no, there? I, I don't know. I don't no, you so. weren't there. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, you, that was that was. I think you told me. I think you told me about it though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. 
that's going to go down in history. Sophie Turner. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie Turner and, and Maisie Williams, yeah. Arya Stark and Sansa Stark. Shout uh-huh. out to them. Even though Littlefinger was right. Hashtag Littlefinger was right. Uh-huh. Um, anything else you want to say before oh, we close out the show? Uh, nah, not really. Talking about, you know, uh, you know uh, Peter Dinklage in Game of Thrones. He was great in Three Billboards. Oh, he's probably. awesome in Three Billboards. Yeah. He's so good. <laughs> People forget he was in the movie. Yeah. Because I, I thought I, he was I didn't great. even know he was in the movie until yeah. he, he popped up. Um, let's finish up by saying Frances McDormand's speech. What do you think of her and the whole Me Too movement and the, and the call out for women to stand? I thought it was great, man. I thought the inclusion writer thing was really, if you have to look that up, it's from uh, Stacey Smith, the creator of the uh, USC Andenberg uh, intervention uh, thing that puts out the annual report for that talks about diversity in movies every year. Um, pretty much everything that you know, Hollywood Reporter and the rap kind of refers to um, each year when they talk about that kind of stuff. Really great to see that get some recognition. Um, you know, and but you know, my my kind of question is, I don't know if you saw the whole Emma Stone thing. With the Emma Stone presenting the best Why directors. was that a controversy? Um, I think it's controversial because she's calling out the fact that there's only been five women nominated for best so? director. There's only been five black people nominated too. Why didn't she say Jordan Pill's name? It's kind of the it's kind of like white feminism, kind of you know that that kind of feel to to it too. You know, Guillermo del Toro's nominated too. He's also a minority. Um, are you saying women are more discriminated against than black people? You know, that's where it kind of gets tricky. You know? That that's a good point. I, I understand that. I I don't feel like she did it from a place of that kind of negativity though. No, no, she didn't. But then is she also the person to speak on that because she was in uh uh that Aloha State. Aloha, yeah, 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 with the you know um, Bradley Cooper. Yeah, yeah, where she plays a half what is it, half Hawaiian. Half Asian, half Hawaiian. Yeah, half Jamaican. I'm sorry, half Japanese, half Hawaiian. Part. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I, I, I just don't feel like she comes from a place of bad intentions. I just feel like yeah, that was probably poor choice on her words. I just don't feel like she should get eaten alive for that. I feel like l- let's just go after Lena Dunham. <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Everything you want to say to Emma Stone, tweet at Lena, Lena Dunham. Dunham. <laughs> just tweet at Lena Dunham. <laughs> I was like, this is meant for Emma Stone, but screw you, Lena. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Shout out to Lena. I love you, girl. Um, yeah, I just don't feel like Emma Stone comes from a place of like. No, she definitely wasn't trying. No, no, she like, wasn't trying to be offensive. But I, I just feel like, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, Natalie Portman did it earlier too, and I know yeah. that's different because there's different nominees or whatever. But I just feel like, yeah, that was funny when Natalie did it too because it cuts. Yeah. It cut to. Guillermo? <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. As soon as Natalie said that, it cut to Guillermo, and Guillermo went, <laughs> Yeah, what do you want me to say? What did I do? <laughs> yeah. Shit. I don't know. It's not my fault I got a dick. Yeah. Um, I think that's part of it, too. Like, Natalie Portman already made the joke. You're, you're kind of making a worse joke of it sure, now, too. Sure, but Natalie Portman didn't say uh, a specific name. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Emma Stone said Greta Gerwig. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a little unfair on Greta Gerwig's part, too. Like, you know, being called out like that. Sure. Um, where it's not even like. I just feel like when it comes to Emma Stone, I, I really do feel like I'm, maybe I'm just an Emma Stone fan or whatever, but I just feel like she's not coming from a place of bad intention. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but it's not I, bad I, I get. I, I totally get that. Yeah, because it, it, it should be recognized. Jordan Peele should be recognized. And should, so should Guillermo. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. But Frances McDormand's speech was pretty gnarly. She went pretty nuts because yeah. she's kind of nuts. Hey, man. Um, oh, I was really happy, by the way. Whenever, like, Dunkirk won an award and everybody's like, thank you to Christopher Nolan. He cuts over to Nolan. He's, like, smiling over there. You know what I mean? He deserves it, man. Yeah. That guy's yeah. a master. He deserves a, he deserves all that attention for sure. Uh, when it comes to any shout-out to the Walmart commercials, shout-out to Walmart. Oh, yeah. McCoy. They're actually... No, I'm not going to lie, man. I'm not... I don't, I don't like Walmart, but... I don't like Walmart. Yeah. Hey, I love Walmart. Walmart's my shit, bro. Yeah. I go to Walmart all the time. I go to Walmart with my sweatpants on, my flip flops, bro. I'm a true American, bro. Yeah, true American. That's a true American. In my pajamas. Yeah, you, you're not American unless you've been in Walmart in your pajamas. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad they get like those little. Uh... Dude, shout out to Rachel Morrison and uh, what's her name, D. Reeves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was in that commercial? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, also, the commercial for Twitter was dope. I don't know why I liked it so oh, much. Oh yeah, but that I was liked weird. It. Yeah, I didn't, that was I didn't weird, but that. I kind of yeah. liked it. I don't know why I liked yeah. it. It's like super like. It was just that one girl kind of doing like a spoken word thing. Yeah. And they, they, they cut to like a cut to shirt. Ava so and they cut to uh, Isa Ray. Taika Waititi was in it too, wasn't Taika, it? No, Taika Waititi was in the other one, in the Walmart one, I think. Oh, he's in Walmart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, the, or some other he was one. He in one of them, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Taika who freaking took yeah, the I was like, damn, he got a commercial? Bro, that, Ta- yeah. Ta- Taika is kicking ass, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Taika's kicking ass. Today, get Thor Ragnarok on Blu-ray 
Go buy it if you haven't done it already. The movie's awesome. All the support to Taika Waititi. <laughs> Man, well, you know, I don't know. They didn't show it during the Oscars, but I always thought it was kind of funny how, like, The Gap keeps having those commercials with, like, Metro Boomin and SZA. Like, I've seen that. Yeah, isn't that yeah, kind of crazy? Like, it this is. Guy, this guy's, like, a trap, like, producer. Like, you know, he, he doesn't even rap. He's just, like, making beats. And yeah. he's, like, in commercials, dancing and shit. I don't yeah. know. That's kind of funny to me, man. It is always funny uh, when I see those. So yeah. I just, I, I connected to that with the Taika thing because, it's like, damn, behind the scenes people are, like, starting to get become bigger stars than, like, even a lot of the, the, the you know, in front of the camera, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, that's it for me. I mean, the only other thing that maybe stood out was the honor of the veterans. Um, mm, the it, troops. That was cool. The, the, I, I liked it. I just felt like it was a little random. There was no lead-up to it. Yeah. It just I felt like they could have it could have been more earned as far as a lead up like it felt like yeah. the joke and then it's like here's the veterans and it's like where did this come from well I I I know I think that was kind of their way of like hey guys I know we're gonna shit on the you know Trump a lot but we're still American like you know we're yeah. still celebrating but, but it, I mean it, uh, that's true yeah. it, it probably yeah. was propaganda in that sense but I I mean it's it's good propaganda. I feel like they, they should yeah no I, lo- the I love I love them I love the I love that montage that nerd montage in there too. Uh, the movie lover montage or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, that yeah. Dope. Uh, it was amazing. It was um, dope. Yeah, they have so many great. I love the the montage which, where they show like the best supporting actors, best supporting actresses before like those came out. The leading actors and leading actresses too. Really yeah, great. Awesome, guys. All right. Well, those were our thoughts on the Oscars, guys. Let us know what you guys thought. Let us know what you guys thought was the biggest snub, your favorite winner, who should have won visual effects. Let us know in the comments down below. I'm sure we're going to have a debate about that. What would you guys think of the Oscars? Was it too much? Was it too little? Was it fun? Was it entertaining? Was it too safe? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you guys leave a comment, guys. We appreciate it. We read them all the time, and we will be reading them next week as well. So make sure you leave one because we will be looking at them as we always do. And for this episode, I am Ace. This is RB3. And we are peacing out from the Meeting of Podcast. Peace out, guys.